Good afternoon. Welcome to another Jackson Hole High School sports production from Jackson Hole Radio. I'm Jake Nichols alongside of Mac Fairbair, Liam McPee, Kimmy K, ready to bring all the action from Senior Night. I guess we got to call it Senior Day. It sounds weird. But okay. Today's basketball brought to you by Young Life of Jackson Hall, where they're all about teenagers. Jackson Lumber, Jackson's original board store. The McPeak Group, Jackson Hall's premier real estate team at Sotheby's International Realty. The town square ends of Jackson Hall, including the Antler and Elk Country and Cowboy Village Resort, 49er Inn and Suites. Big old tires, they got the scoreboard and they got you covered too with a reputation you can ride on at the Target Plaza. Great Northern Coffee, their old world style makes all the difference and I am hopped up on about two cups of that stuff right now. Let's do it! I'm excited. This, this could be a good good two games, girls and boys. Yes, absolutely. The girls looking for their first win for the on the Bronx side of things, while the Evanston Red Devils, I think, have a pair of wins this season. And the boys game is huge. Whoever wins is going to be the second seed for the 4A Southwest Quadrant. So it's a very, very big game. Big games, big playoff implications seeding wise we'll talk about that more with the boys but for the girls the lady bronx they're locked in at number four they can't do anything to better that and they already know their opponent for regionals in green river which begins next week thursday it'll be the cody phillies and four against one it won't be easy but this is a winnable game on the home court against evanston the evanston girls team the Lady Red Devils, two and 18 overall, two and three in quadrant, number 15. And in almost all the statistics, the Evanston girls are at the bottom with us. They're, yes. they're like our buddies down at the bottom, but they've won two games this year and we have not, the Jackson girls have not, but maybe tonight as we celebrate the seniors, not a whole lot of seniors to talk about for the girls. Um, just a couple, three, maybe. Uh, I know Raina. Yes, Raina Rose, Grayson. Melanie Hierro, and Grayson Rosenberg are the only three seniors for the Lady Bronx. So bright future indeed, as they're still a very young team. And so... I got Melanie as a junior. Is that wrong? Is she a senior? She is a senior. Okay. I got to correct that. Okay, so we'll say, uh, yeah, goodbye. Bittersweet moment. Mac, you were just there. And I want you to talk about that in a little bit when we come back. But we got uh, still time in the pregame, and we'll set up the girls first. We got some interviews also with head coach Matt Elliott for the boys game. All that's coming up as part of the pregame show right here on the home of the Bronx, KZ95 and the Jackson Hole Radio Network. Experience Jackson Hole like a local while staying at the Antler Inn, Elk Country Inn, Cowboy Village Resort, or 49er Inn and Suites. With the best entertainment, dining, shopping, bars, and brews all in walking distance, you'll never want to leave. Call 1-800-4-TETONS or find them on the web at townsquareins.com. He runs across, goes to the red part of the section. Uh, black team has it, white team is not playing people down like they did before. Oh, it looks like they're, uh, they're lining up to do something. And shoots. And boom goes down. Oh, he's gonna get more than one shot. Oh, shooting again. The dynamite does not go boom that time. Play by play is hard. Uh, so is Jackson Hole Real Estate. Get a pro. McPeak Group proudly supporting the Bronx on their march toward a state championship. Live coverage of Jackson Hole High School Sports on KZ95. Back to the pregame as we wait for the JV game to wrap up. Pretty good JV game here. Just a one-score game for the last 10 minutes, it seems. Been close. Yes, it's always a treat to see the JV Jackson versus the JV Evanston. Every single year, it's always been a close game. And it's the last game that the juniors will be playing on JV. It's a very big moment for both teams. Yeah, a lot of recognizable names on each side. You got obviously the Larson twins, 
who are, whose brothers of last year's senior Isaac Larson. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you remember for the girls team two years back, Anna Revel, her brother Sam Revel, also on this JV team. Uh, Chase Brunner, brother of Seb Brunner. Just a lot of names going down. The last Brunner coming up, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, the I, fourth one. I remember Anna, and if Sam's half the player Anna is, was, yeah, that's exciting. Going to be feeding the varsity here pretty soon, and we will be saying goodbye to a few of the varsity. Let's uh, talk about the girls' side of things, and, well, it's easy to cover some of the statistics. There's always a zero in front of the win column, uh, and there's always a, a big number as far as uh, what kind of streak the team is on, on a, a long, long losing streak, 0-20 in the year, 0-5 in quadrant. And they'll come in the number four seed playing against uh, the Cody Phillies. Uh, but a chance, really, to to do something here against Evanston. This team, what was the previous Evanston game? It seemed fairly close. Yeah, 38-22. That's not bad. Yes, it was very close for the first three quarters. And mm. then the Evanston De Red Devils did a really good job of pulling away in that fourth quarter. So, you know, it's not how you start. It's how you finish. Yeah. Yes. Oh man, another Liamism. Liam is Liamism. Yeah. Should get a frame Something like on, that. on the bottom of the scoreboard. We're gonna put it out. We're gonna talk about your vaunted defense too. I I got a statistic that I bet even uh Fairbairn over here, the stat nerd, doesn't know. Um but when we talk about the boys, it's pretty interesting. I was digging deep into the boys' stats, but uh, keys to the game for the girls, I thought, you know, make small, achievable goals. I mean, you could make a goal of of winning. Um, certainly a win here at home against Evanston is possible. But make small goals. Win the first quarter first. Win the second quarter. Um, win the turnover battle. Win the rebound battle. Just set manageable goals and achieve them. And then you might look up in the fourth and say, hey, we're up to. Holy cow. We got this. Also, get out of your comfort zone, especially you seniors. Rhodes, Hiero, Rosenberg, if you're ever going to just go off, go off, man. Well, you got nothing to lose. Do things you're not used to doing. For Grayson, that means dribbling. <laughs> go ahead and put the ball on the floor, Grayson. Make a basketball move. Hero, how many times have we seen Melanie Hero just launch one and bottom of the net? Bam. I want to see her do that like five times today. And, and hit some threes. Um, do stuff that you don't normally do because this is it. You're not going to play on this floor again ever, um, especially the senior. So go crazy. And yeah. then uh, make every possession count. Can't afford. We always talk about turnovers. But every trip up the court, um, Evanston's not – uh, their girls are not a team. They're, they're going to make a lot of mistakes as well. They're going to turn the ball over. They're going to make mistakes. So limit yours, and you can play with them. They, Evanston's not a team that lights it up shooting-wise. They don't do a lot of things great. They're just, you know, kind of average and a lot of some real physical team for sure. Um, but you can trade buckets with them if you make your possessions count. So every time up the floor, don't give it away. Get a shot. Get a look. And make every possession count. Those are my keys of the game. You guys, what do you think we got to do? I believe confidence is always a factor in taking good, like, Jackson Lady Bronx do a great job of getting good looks. They just don't fall. And so I'm going to say it again, and I've said it a couple times, is imagine the ball going in the hoop before it goes in. And when that happens, shooting with confidence is such a big key to the game. And once you see it going in, then it will actual go, actually go in. And once they start going in, they're all going to go in, and then the confidence is just going to keep building and building. And that's how the Lady Bronx can get their first win in a very, very long time. Yeah, I mean, it's the, it's the last time you're going to be playing on this court in front of your friends, in front of your family. Why not put on a show? We'll talk about it with the boys also especially, but for um, for girl-wise, um, what do you say? I mean, it's senior night. Do you suggest our, our girls, if you were going to give them advice, if your coach 
uh, Sean Chalkley, do you, do you say go ahead and play with emotion or you try to hold that emotion? Is emotion too much right now for the girls to handle? Do you want to tap that emotion tonight? Hopefully we get a crowd getting in here and a little bit of energy in the building, but it's senior night. Emotion so might be running high. Is that good or bad? I think it's a mix of both. You don't want to get too emotional where you get distracted from the game. But you also got to play with heart, and playing with heart is what the Lady Bronx are full of. It, it's amazing how they can go and play each game all 32 minutes. And even though the score may not be the way they want it to be, they still go out there and play as hard as possible, and it's fantastic to watch. I don't mind having our boys play with emotion either it's if it, it should be an emotional game from both sides because the evanston red devils also play with a ton of passion and it can be their downfall as well they can be high as a kite when they're hitting them and then they can just be really bad low in a funk but emotions will be running high i think all day today for girls and boys we'll come right back talk more about the girls pregame as we're a few minutes away from having this JVE game wrap up and getting things started here with the girls. Boys to follow, and we're glad to have you join us any way you can. 95.3 KZ95 on the radio, and we're also on the internet, audio radio, KZ95.live. And then, of course, on the YouTube channel, Jackson Hole Radio is our YouTube channel. Just go there, subscribe while you're there, and you'll never miss a game. You're enjoying all the action this afternoon, thanks to KZ95 and Jackson Hole. Hey, I'm Allie Lane from Jackson Hole Young Life. Do you remember what it's like to be a teenager? It can be really tough trying to navigate sports, academics, relationships with family and friends, not to mention the added stress of social media, phones, and screen time. Young Life believes that every teen deserves to know that they are loved and their story matters. Young Life leaders enter the world of teens, focusing on what matters to them, fun, adventure, friendship, and a sense of significance. If you love teenagers as much as we do, there's more info at our website, jacksonhole.younglife.org, to learn more. High Country Linen Service has grown with its state-of-the-art facility to be the premier rental service for linens, uniforms, and entry mats. High Country Linen also provides wholesale janitorial supplies, paper products, and earth-friendly cleaning supplies to Jackson Hole, Teton Valley, and beyond. Call 733 2638 or come see us at 355 North Glenwood on the web at highcountrylinen.com. Back to the live action on KZ95. Here's Jake Nichols. Jake, Mac, Liam, Kimmy here ready to bring the action to you on senior afternoon and the JV game wrapped up and it was the Red Devils. Doggone it, the pitchforks got us. Oh uh, well, we'll get them in the varsities as both girls teams uh, out to take their warm ups right now. While we have time, let's talk a little bit to, uh, with Coach Elliott about last week's games. Um, guys, we, did, we didn't broadcast those games. Mac, you were here. Liam, what were you doing? You saw that Star Valley game? That was fun. Yeah, I was in the student section. Ooh, nice. Well, here's what, uh, here's what Coach Elliott had to say about the Star Valley game. Uh, and if, you, if you missed it, uh, it went OT, and the Jackson Bronx erased two double-digit deficits to get back in that one, showing a ton of resilience. Here's Coach Elliott. Well, on a positive note, let's start with the resiliency from those kids. As you said, uh, two 10-point deficits to overcome uh, really shows the maturity that this group has developed over the four years that they've – most of them have been uh, four-year lettermen. So huge, great job overcoming 10-point deficits, not – necessarily folding when star valley would go on those big runs and again we were down eight with four minutes to go in the game and uh, still showed a lot of composure as well uh, at times this season you've seen we might possibly speed up and try to get too much back at one time and uh, we definitely did not do that uh showed composure ran some really good sets down the stretch and then you know had some nice strategic 
um, opportunities, you know, where we fouled some guys and they missed some shots. So super proud of the boys there. Um, obviously trying to get better every time we step on the floor, uh, got to be better limiting those runs, but more importantly, valuing every possession. Uh, you know, we got complacent there in the fourth quarter, uh, had some big turnovers. It probably could have cost us, uh, three straight possessions, uh, down the floor in the fourth quarter for turnovers. And you can't have that against good teams, but uh, all in all, what a win for those boys. Uh, what an environment, you know, winning overtime thriller against star Valley at home on a Friday night in front of a packed crowd. You know, that's kind of why you put the time in. Big, big win over our rivals that splits the season series with the Braves 1-1 and has playoff implications because it means a win today secures that number two seed back for the Bronx if they get it. Yes, both Red Devils are two and no, the Red Devils are three and two in quadrant play while the Bronx are two and three. And so, yeah, it's going to be very, very interesting. If Evanston wins, they'll be four and two quadrant, we'll be two and four. But meanwhile, if Jackson wins, both teams will be three and three. And because Jackson swept the Northwest, that's what will give them the edge in playoff seating. And the and a win over uh, a one win over Star Valley, and Evanston has not beaten Star Valley in two tries. I don't know if that factors in before we move to the Northwest scenario, but yeah, a, a win um, guarantees Jackson that two seed. We could talk about what that means, but um, we we will in a, in a minute. But so that game, huge, huge high, and it's tough to get back up, get on a bus at 6 a.m. and go to Green River. Kind of a letdown. Liam, what happened? Emotionally spent? Yeah, I mean, that game, it's, it's pretty big because I think Matt can relate to me on this. Any Jackson High School game where you have the student section behind you, it's just like a whole other level. Jackson Hole hockey, even the hockey team, when they have the student section behind them, it's crazy. But that high school game was even more, like, insane because they just rushed the court. It was like a college game. Yeah. After, yeah, there was, like, plans. It's like, if we win, storm the court. That's basically what was going on in the student section. And, I mean, it was kind of a coaching mismatch by uh, Star Valley because the kid who ended up taking the shot was the designated fouler, not your three-point shooter. Oh. I think the play just broke down and he just had to take the shot. Yeah. Not the way they drew it up in Star Valley. That was that was a huge game. It was pretty cool to see the court get stormed, all that stuff. And then, you know, how do you keep keep things up, get on a bus the next day early in the morning, and then have to deal with Green River, who are very good down there, the Wolves. And I don't know if it's so much the atmosphere. It's pretty good atmosphere in the Wolf Den, but I, it's just something about the Green River boys shoot it well. They love their own basket. They shoot it so good down there, although it wasn't a necessarily an offensive fire show. Uh, here's what Coach Elliott had to say about a little bit of a letdown in Green River. Obviously a little bit of a letdown game on Saturday. Kind of was expected, you know, a lot of emotions, as you said, going into that Friday night game, you know, and then uh, 545 loading back up on the bus. So it didn't have a lot going our way. But again, no excuses. Uh, we knew if we gave them hope and let them stick around or take a big lead, uh, that might be a little challenging. And I think we learned some valuable lessons. You know, we overcame some deficits against Star Valley and, you know, some other teams. But at some point, you can't dig yourself a hole in the first half and have to climb out of it time and time again. And uh, that's what happened at Green River. Climbed out of it, had it tied at one point, you know, then got a little loose with the basketball again in the fourth quarter and, you know, lost a tight one by one. All things considered, you shoot one of 17 from the three-point line to only have a one-point loss. You know, a lot of good things we can probably learn from that. Yeah, besides no emotion, uh, nothing left in the emotional tank. It was also a dreadful offensive performance as the game went on. Jackson, the offense just stalled out and um, just lost creativity, which is going to factor in my, to my keys to the game this afternoon. Uh, the offense became pretty one-dimensional towards the end. No, there was not a lot of ball movement going on. There was not much of anything except a couple of passes around the perimeter, panic, and then launch a, you know, 30-foot three. Like, that's not the recipe for offense. That's not what's been doing it all year. I mean... Well, that's why most teams, when they do the like scouting report on the Jackson Bronx, they're going to look to zone Jackson, at least for most teams, are going to look to zone Jackson so they can get rid of that inside presence of Andrew Hanna and that height that Jackson has. 
because Hannah was destroying Green River. Despite the Jackson loss, Hannah scored 30 points. Yeah. A career high at, at, for playing four years in varsity. He had his, one of his best performances that's he's, that he's ever had. And Green River just had no way of stopping it. And Jackson should have continued to go to Hannah. And they did a very solid job of doing that. Yeah, but they went away a little bit from it towards the end. And, and even Coach Elliott said, I don't, I don't know what happened. <laughs> oh, he stopped going to the big man. All right, let's uh, take one more break. We'll come back and get right back to the girls. Girls, ready to go. It's the Lady Red Devils and the Lady Bronx as they both uh, continue their warm-ups about a five minutes away from tap. You're enjoying Bronx basketball on KZ95 and the Jackson Hole Radio Network. Jackson Lumber. The Board Store, Jackson's oldest business and only true lumber yard in town. Jackson Lumber's hardware people are the best in the business, and they do it right the first time. Jackson Lumber works with people who make a living building, so the tools they sell are definitely the best hand tools and power tools available. With names like Vest Tool, Milwaukee, Makita, Skillsaw, Senko, Fine, and DeWalt, Jackson Lumber, the board store at 130 South Grovant. Call 733-6000, 733-6000. They say the best offense is a good defense. This theory applies on Wyoming's roads and highways just as much as it does on the basketball court. Always know road conditions before you head out. Visit wyoroad.info, download YDOT's 511 app, or call 511 for current conditions. Buckle up every trip, every time, and put away distractions, especially your phone, so you're better prepared for the unexpected. Finally, never drink and drive, not even a little because buzz driving is drunk driving. This message brought to you by YDOT. This is KZ95 with live coverage of the Jackson Bronx. Back courtside getting ready for the start of this one. Should be a fun one. These uh, Evanston Lady Red Devils coming off a Disappointing loss in their last game. Both these teams have not played in almost, uh, well, exactly a full calendar week. They both played last Saturday. Evanston played on the road in Star Valley, and these girls lost to the Star Valley Braves, although they were in it for a little bit. And overall, 2-18 and for the Evanston Red Devils under head coach Roy Barker in his first year. 2-3 and in quadrant, ranked 15 out of 16 teams. Uh, you look at what the Evanston Red Devils do, points per game, not a bunch, 25 per game. That's towards the bottom. They shoot about 24.5% from the field. That, again, is towards the bottom. They don't shoot threes real well either. And uh, defense is pretty sticky, uh, especially physical. They'll bang you around a little bit, on the, definitely on the glass, something that Lady Bronx have gotten better and better at is playing physical in the paint. Yes, especially Grayson Rosenberg and Mads Holland. They've been doing a much better job battling in the paint, getting good rebounds, getting good stops. Their defensive pressure has been way better than we've seen over as it, the year has progressed and just so much improvement from both teams, but especially these Lady Bronx. Unlike some of the teams we've seen this season for Jackson, uh, Evanston does not have a legit big outside of Cassie Barker, who is a legit big. She's 5'10", but the freshman does not start normally and does not play uh, a ton of minutes. She'll be in there about half the game, Cassie Barker, averaging uh, nearly three a game. She leads them in rebounding at about four boards per game. She doesn't play the whole time. She can be uh, foul prone, so boy, I'd love to see uh, Rosenberg, Holland, and anybody else go right at her because she can be a little over aggressive and, and take fouls pretty fast. But really, this Evanston Red Devil team goes as Emma Lonsway goes. She's only a sophomore. She's the one with the handles. She's the only one with the handles on the Red Devils. They do not have a point guard who handles the ball like she does and dribbles like she does. Uh, after her, Braylon Morrison, the sophomore, is okay at it. I was just, her parents are right over here. I was like, well, if Lonsway is not on the floor, it's the, the Red Devils are a dreadful mess. And she said, I know, and I wish my daughter would. And I said, it's up to your daughter to be the other point guard. She said she doesn't want to be. <laughs> she doesn't <laughs> want the ball. 
But Braylon is probably the other ball handler if there was one. J.C. Uh, Bardsley, the senior, can handle it a little bit. She's got some poise, but really you notice when the Lady Red Devils do not have Lon's way on the floor. And it's one reason you'll see Coach Roy Barker call a ton of timeouts this afternoon. He wants to keep Lon's way fresh. Uh, when she's not out there, it's, it's noticeable. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, you just can't let her get into foul trouble because if, if Evanston, uh, if she gets into foul trouble, and I mean, as you're saying, if she's kind of the puzzle piece that holds them together, we might just see it kind of unravel. And I'm sure that, I mean, I don't, I don't know if that's a goal for Coach Shockley, but it's something to think you're thinking about. I, I wouldn't mind seeing number two come out of the game. It's the uh, Young Life of Jackson Hole's uh, introduction. Let's let the girls introduce themselves. Ashley Chamberlain, sophomore. Marlowe Strickland, sophomore. Daniel Youngest, yeah, junior. Millie Yeppel, senior. Zoe Bosch, sophomore. Allison Woodchuck, junior. Lillard Weir, sophomore. Sophia Vasquez-Baez, sophomore. Lucy Webb, junior. Raider Rhodes, senior. Grace Rosenberg, senior. Mads Holland, junior. Hayden Falk, sophomore. Leal Merriman, sophomore. Pat Ankeny, junior. Harley Rommel, sophomore. Good job, Mads. Let's get to it. Jackson Brox in their home whites, trimmed in black and orange for Evanston. The pitchforks are out, and they'll be wearing their road red. Emma Lonsway with a start, of course. Talked about that sophomore guard. J.C. Bardsley, the senior, Braylon Morrison, a sophomore. It's a young, young team. Just uh, uh, two seniors, Ryan Devonham, who you see right now, number 31. And Emerson Fessler, Emmy Fessler, she's a sophomore. So a core sophomore group. You're going to be good for a couple years. Melanie Hero will get the start for the Jackson Bronx. If Jackson had a triple shooter, I think it might be Hera. I mean, she hit some big ones. Zoe Bosch, Raina Rhodes, Grayson Rosenberg. And yeah, looks like they're gonna put every senior they got on the floor. Mads Holland, the junior. So it'll be Hero, Bosch, Rhodes, Rosenberg and Holland, Lucy Webb, the non-senior, will sit for Hero so we can start all seniors. Jackson moving left to right on your YouTube channel. And we are ready to be Devin Hammond Rosenberg. This is one that 
Grayson should win. Ryan's Ryan Debenham's dream, by the way, is to do a back back stand a back flip. What do you call the back handstand flip thing? Back handspring. Back handspring, yeah. Debenham says she wants to do a back handspring. She's been working on it, so maybe if she hits a three, you'll see Ryan just spring into it. Got Milan's way with the ball now as Jackson fumbled it out of bounds on their first possession, something we said they can't do. Lon's way with it now, working on Rhodes. Kicks it out to Morrison over to Bardsley. Bardsley to Emma Fessler. Fessler walks it back to the top of the key. Morrison to Lon's way. And now Morrison will launch one off the back of the iron, and that's no good. The rebound, Grayson Rosenberg taking a spill as Fessler. She's okay. And Jackson will set up the half-court offense. Bosch against Morrison. So he tries to back her way into her as those two banging all the way. Rosenberg finds back door here. Oh, open for a moment. Oh, I thought Melanie was going to put it up. She got open for a second. And now they'll reset. Bosch gets the benefit a little bit of a screen, but getting a hand in there is Lon's way. She was looking for Fessler, but threw it too far. And right there was Rhodes. Reina with it for Jackson. Just underway, no score. There's a bump. Devin Ham's going to get, oh, no, no call. Let him go. Oh, no, they are going to call that. All right. Right, Devin Ham. And you, you'll see a lot of bumping. Devin Ham, Fessler, and Barker will be very physical for Evanston. And Jackson can give it right back. We've seen it. Here's Hero with it now. And her pass through the hands, that's going to be an over and back violation. And so far, Jackson's just getting a little bit too excited here as they've turned it over three straight possessions. Yeah, yeah Jackson coming out just too hot for their own ability. Talked a little bit about the emotion. How do you channel it? And the girls right now having trouble channeling some of that as perimeter pass. Here's Bardsley with a long three. That's no good. Fessler rebound. And she gets blocked and stripped away by Rosenberg. Luck out from behind. Lonsway steals it from Bosch. Zoe never felt her there. Lonsway works it to Bardsley. J.C. Bardsley. Now top of the key. It's Lonsway. That's too short. The rebound, Zoe Bosch. Nobody has been able to crack the seal yet. We're two minutes into the first. Rosenberg finds Hero cutting all along the baseline. Partially tip pass by Devonham. Zoe gets it to Rainer Road. She'll try a baseline jumper. That's too strong. And the rebound, though, Holland on the backside. Now a steal by Morrison. She's going to go all by herself and can't make the layup. Rosenberg with a rebound. And there's Lonsway. And we talked about important that she stay clean in this one. That's her first foul. Yeah, Jackson just playing just with so much intensity, so much emotion, but I just don't think their ability is up to par with that. I mean, the good news is nothing hurt. We're still at zeros. And Zoe works it up ahead to Holland. Now to Raina Rhodes. Rhodes back to Bosch. Ready to check in. Two Devils, one Bronk. Here's Bosch in the lane. She had a Got herself open and then didn't take the shot. Here's Rhodes with a baseline jumper. Too short. Rebound. Lonsway on the backside. Emma Lonsway pushes it across the timeline. Now pulls up on Bosch to Fessler. Fessler to Bardsley. JC Bardsley to Emma. Fessler thought about it. Now floats a pass near side to Morrison. Over to Bardsley. Not a lot going on underneath. It's been one of the things Jackson girls have done well this year is not allow any traffic under the basket. Yes, absolutely. And you can see that by their zone. They're playing a 1-2-2. Two, two. And I think that's a very smart decision by Coach Sean Shockley as, you know, Evanston is not a great shooting team. And they like to get their points inside. And Jackson doing a good job of stopping that. They do. Most of the Red Devils' points come with little 10, 12-foot shots. Um, but yeah, they do not fire a lot from deep. There's a bad pass, gets into the arms of Fessler on the steal. Still no score, here's Lonsway. Her pass almost stolen by Bertram, who is in the game now. Webb and Bertram have checked in. Lonsway bounce pass inside to Barker. That's their big. And now outside of the 
freshman Violet Cook. She's too strong with a long jumper, but a nice save by Barker momentarily. And now she's going to have to save it again. Oh, wow. Good job by Cassie Barker. Yeah, I mean, so far it's just been all Evanston offensively, but they have just not been hitting their shots. Jackson doing a good job playing good perimeter defense. Evanston going big now. Anna Lee West, the freshman, and Cassie Barker, the freshman, both in. Both with good size. Fessler to Lonsway. Lonsway working on Lucy Webb. Almost lost her for a moment. Now to Fessler. She'll try one, and that's off the front of the iron. No good. Rebound to the backside by West, and that won't go either. And now Grayson Rosenberg pulls it down, and these baskets aren't big enough for this game. <laughs> They're not round enough or something. No score. And halfway through the first. Zoe Bosch working on Anna Lee West. Now top of the key to Webb. Webb, far side. Bircham moving on Fessler into the lane. Rosenberg, she's open. That was a nice bounce pass to Rosenberg. Holland with the put back. That won't go either. And we might have a scoreless first. Lunsway with it. Her pass to Fessler knocked out of bounds by Zoe Bosch. Timeout, Evanston. And I was waiting to see who would call it. <laughs> yes, both teams not taking care of the ball very well. There's been a lot of deflections, and it's been great from a coach's standpoint because you want to see both teams play well defensively, but now you got to focus more offensively, and the points just are not falling for either team. Yeah. yeah. As a firm believer in defensive championships, I mean, they do, but that's also going with the fact <laughs> that you have at least one point on the board. And defense is half the equation. The other half is just uh, sloppiness offensively. And I'm a firm believer in the stats don't lie. And these are the worst two scoring shooting teams in, in all the 4A. And it's evident right now as we break the huddle and get back to the action with 325 to go the first. We're scoreless. It's Evanston ball. Violet Cook inbounds to J.C. Beardsley. Bardsley. And here's side Morrison. Her pass intended for Bardsley in. And just Lucy Webb is the only one there. She knocks it out of bounds. Ball will stay with Evanston. Inbounds pass to Barker. She attracts a crowd. And I think that's off her last. But they're going to say one of the white jersey Girls got a hand on it, still Red Devil ball. Bardsley triggers into Barker. Top of the key, Cook swings it over to Morrison. Bardsley trying to get inside to West. That did not get there. Mads Holland scoops up the loose change. Gets it to Lucy Webb. Webb across the line. Avoids a double team, gets it to Birch, and she'll try a three, and that's too strong. Rebound out of bounds. No, the inbounds and a scramble for it goes to Lucy Webb. Her shot, no good. And so far in this basketball game, oh boy. there's been a lot of 50-50 balls. No one wants the basketball in a lot. Like, that was a great steal by Grayson Rosenberg. Most aggressive I've seen her so far this season. Yeah, Jackson appeared to have picked up on the hint that uh, you got to shoot more. There's Anna Lee West, and finally we got a basket. It's 2 0 Evanston as Barker fed West the two bigs for the Red Devils combined to get the first points of the game. Holland to Lucy Webb. Bardsley on her. Webb pulls back, hands off to Zoe Bosch. Bosch goes to the floor with Bardsley. Now tangles up with. Cook on that far side. I believe that's Violet Cook, yeah. And that'll be a jump ball with the arrow favoring the Bronx. Zoe Bosch will trigger in under baseline. 2.14 to go with the first. 2-0 Evanston in a slow-moving game. A lot of defense, if that's your thing. Bosch inbound. Oh, timeout for Shockley, and he might have been worried about that inbounds pass ever getting there. But he will call the timeout. So the timeout on the floor will go as well. You're enjoying Bronx basketball on KZ95, the Jackson Hole Radio Network. Experience Jackson Hole like a local. Recently renovated, the 49er boasts a new lobby, extended continental breakfast, indoor swimming pool, fitness facility, and 12-person outdoor hot tub. Located on Pearl Street, the 49er is just three short blocks from Jackson's greatest bars and restaurants, where you'll find your home away from home. Enjoy your time in Jackson as part of the town square ends, and stay at the 49er Inn and Suites. 
Here's your voice of the Jackson Bronx, Jake Nichols on KZ95. Well, with just a little over two minutes to go in the first, you haven't scored yet, but you still aren't feeling too bad if you're Jackson because they're only down 2 nothing. Yeah, I mean, you haven't really seen a lot of shots from, like, your primary shooter, Zoe Vosh. Not at all. Really haven't seen many shots from anyone. Is Ooh, an intentional foul, it looks like, on... Might be Cassie Barker. Uh, Bardsley. Or are they showing 55? Yeah, they're showing 55. Yeah, it is Barker. And Bar we <laughs> Barker can be real physical. Jackson ball, Zoe Bosch with 2.12 to go. And Jackson still looking for their first points. Uh, the afternoon gets it to Bertram. Bertram took that step. I, boy, I just don't like that travel call, maybe because I never see it. But that step you take before you, you know, you catch the ball and you're already stepping. And, and they call that all the time. I don't like it. It doesn't look like a travel to me. Yeah, I, I would have to agree with you on that one. Here's Evanston with a cook into the lane. Her shot hard off the glass. Scramble for the rebound. And you're going to see a whole bunch of this this afternoon. You're talking about the two teams most likely to have every girl on the floor on the floor. Like, these are the two teams. This is my scenario I would conjure if I want to, you know, shot of eight of the ten girls on the floor all off their feet. These are the two teams. The inbounds pass, and that's challenged and knocked out of bounds off Fessler or Rhodes. They're going to say Reyna. Still Evanston basketball. They lead 2 0 with under two to go now. Bardsley will, or sorry, uh, Lonsway looking for somebody. It got Morrison. Braylon Morrison feeds it back to Lonsway to Fessler, far side. Morrison, she'll try the shot and. She's got it. Coming out to challenge was Webb, but a good shot to make it 4 0. With a minute 35 to go now, Webb working on Lonsway. Lost the handle for a moment. Now gets it to Ellison Burcham. Burcham drives the lane, runs into Anna Lee West. And I mean, runs into her. The loose change goes right to Fessler, who gets it to Lonsway. Out of Morrison, wide open. Nobody near her, but she misses. Rebound West. Her putback won't go, and it's tapped out of bounds by Rhodes. It'll be Evanston ball. And as good as Jackson defense has been, uh, they have they got to get a point here. They got to get a shot to go. And it will actually be Jackson ball. And oh. it's interesting, despite we played almost seven minutes, and Jackson hasn't committed a single foul. Yeah, Inbounds. Well. They haven't committed a single point either. <laughs> <laughs> it's like devoid of stats of any kind. Yes. Pass to Webb. Oh, boy, that was a dangerous hung in the air for a while. Here's Bertram on the double team, and she gets bumped by Devonham, I believe. He's going to pick up her second. They're going to give it to Lonsway, and that's tough. Oh, that is tough. Coach Roy Barker is going to go right away and get Emma Lonsway, I would imagine. Or is he? He is. They cannot afford to have her off the floor for any amount of time. Now's when Jackson could do something without her to bring the ball up the court. Evanston's very susceptible. Here's Bertram. She's watched there closely by Barker. Now to Webb. Her shot partially blocked by Webb. And now out of bounds. And Mac is pointing, saying that's Jackson Ball. And yeah. Roy Barker is going to plead his case. Very heads up play by Allison Birch of throwing it off the defender right before she went out of bounds. The inbounds pass coming from Lucy Webb. Webb trying to get it over the top of Morrison and cannot do it. As that is, ball is eventually picked off. Here's Violet Cook. We're under a minute to go in the first now. Barker, she runs kind of out of control and runs over the leg of... Maybe Lucy Webb, but she got contacted somehow, but Cassie was kind of, oh no, no call. And so far in this game, we've seen a lot of like rainbow passes, balls that are just in the air for too long of time. Yeah, 
Not a lot of sharp, crisp passing. You can't float them around. Here's Fessler wide open, a little breakdown in the zone, but her shot too short. Rebound Barker out of bounds. It'll stay with Evanston. So with Barker in there and West on the boards, although West is not in there right now, Evanston's dominating the glass. Pass into Barker. She get lost the handle and got knocked down. And again, this game real physical. Hero also hits the deck. Barker looks a little shaken up. She got blasted in there. She's usually on the hammer end. She does not often play the nails. She plays the part of the hammer, but she's talking to Coach Barker about that. Meanwhile, Devonham goes to the line, and Ryan is too strong with the first free throw. Yeah, I mean, a quick two fouls for Jackson right there. Burcham checks out, and so does Lucy Webb. Back in Zoe Bosch and Mads Holland. It's Rosenberg, Hero, Holland, Rhodes, and Bosch on the floor. Second free throw is missed. Rebound is off the hands of Evanston. So Jackson Ball with 30 seconds to play in the first. And one basket will cut the lead in half. Inbounds pass to Rhodes. In there to try to steal it is Fessler, but she touched it last out of bounds again. Little pressure here by Evanston. I think both teams could benefit by trying some full court stuff, some traps. Both these teams a little fumbly with the ball, especially with Lon's way out right now. But right now, Jackson has the ball. It's Zoe Bosch watched by Braylon Morrison. Bosch with the right hand dribble, switches left hand, finds an open Holland. She'll fire a line drive shot, rattles in and out. Rosenberg with a rebound, but that won't go either. And down at 10 seconds, Barker will play for the last shot for the Red Devils. It's Cook, the freshman, down to five, four. The crowd will count it down for you as Barker is going to travel. And again, that's that first step after you catch a ball. Is there time to do anything? I don't think so. <laughs> they haven't done anything in eight minutes. Can they do it in two seconds? No, Mary. Bosch to Holland, and that's tipped out of bounds by Parker. And boy, a lot of time ran off, but 0.3 seconds. And it looks like this first quarter is going to end 4 0. A hockey score. Bosch fires into Rosenberg. Her shot is not going to count, and that's how the first will end with the score. Evans to four, Jackson nothing. Back with more on KZ95 of the Jackson Hole Radio Network. Experience Jackson Hole like a local. Recently renovated, the 49er boasts a new lobby, extended continental breakfast, indoor swimming pool, fitness facility, and 12-person outdoor hot tub. Located on Pearl Street, the 49er is just three short blocks from Jackson's greatest bars and restaurants, where you'll find your home away from home. Enjoy your time in Jackson as part of the town square ends, and stay at the 49er Inn and Suites. Your home for Jackson Hole High School sports is KZ95. Let's get back to the game. Yeah, you see the huddle. Uh, Sean Shockley trying to draw up a play that's going to get some points. It's only 4 nothing, so you're in this. If you're the Jackson girls. Yes, I think this is the best defensive quarter they've had all year, and they were really aggressive, and you could just see it in their expressions of their faces that they want to get buckets and they want to score and they just look very aggressive collectively. Good news, bad news. The good news is I think I finally got replay figured out. Bad news is I haven't had an opportunity to use it. <laughs> And you can do it for all the jump balls. Somebody, yeah, I got you. <laughs> the scramble on the floor, you know. I know. We got a fresh eight on the clock, and we'll do it here in period number two. Four nothing Evanston in a slow moving affair if you're a scoreboard watching anyway. That's uh, Barnsley making contact with Rhodes. Everybody's okay. Lucy Webb drives baseline, runs into Anna Lee West. Good ball movement here. Rhodes with an open look, but it's too short. Rebound goes to Grayson. Her shot no good. And here comes Bosch out of nowhere. And her rebound try won't go either. Now you can't have three better locks. Just couldn't get it. 
Evanston ball now. It's Anna Lee West kicks out to an open Bardsley. No look pass to Morrison. Cross court to Fessler. Her shot no good. Rebound. I don't know if Rosenberg saw that. She was busy blocking out Anna Lee West, and the ball landed right at her feet. Well, both teams right now aren't rebounding real well. At least defensively, here's Annalie West out to an open Morrison. She launches, no good. Rebound, Zoe Bosch. Jackson's got to take advantage of the fact that Lonsway is not in the game. Nice save by Rhodes. Mads Hollins with a long one, no good. And the rebound, Bardsley. Raina Rhodes really sold out to save that ball from going out of bounds. Barsley runs into three Bronx, no call. Refs letting him go, and that could be dangerous. This will be a street fight before long between these teams. Rosenberg met Annalie West, kicks it back out to Webb. Now to Rhodes. Rhodes, Holland, she'll drive baseline, double team, shot, no, can't get it. And a jump ball between four different girls. It's Holland, Rosenberg, Lonsway, or Morrison, and West all had a hand on it. I mean, that was one of that's you can't get a more pretty shot than that. That Matt's Holland, yeah. Euro yeah. step jumps. I mean, that should have fallen. Well, it's as if someone put a lid on the rim. Yeah. It's the same basket, too, Mac, you pointed out. Yes, it's always the North Rim basket. Evanston Paul Bardsley brings it up. She's the de facto point guard with Lonsway not in the game. And a whistle and another jump ball. Yeah, I mean, just the hoop early, it looks like looks like a target when they put a lid on the basket so I can't dunk on them and annoy the workers, but you know. Madison Brown will check in for J.C. Bardsley. So now you wonder really who on the Red Devils is going to be their ball handler. It's going to have to be Morrison. Jackson with it now. Lucy Webb working on Violet Cook. As again, Evanston has applied pressure pretty much all game. Zoe Bosch got to get across the line. She does. And now Zoe finds far side Raina Rhodes. Rhodes working on the freshman Cook. Nice drive to get away. And... Heads baseline, she gets fouled by Morrison. And a good job by Rhodes to sense there was a little bit of a hole there, and she took off. And that's what Jackson's got to do to get points on the board, is if they don't get the open shot, then draw the fouls and get to the line. Well, we said the Devils will foul. This is a pretty aggressive team. Evanston from the line. Rhodes will try her first. No good. 42% free throw shooter on the year. Yeah, I mean, to wipe that zero off the board would be a big thing here. Yeah, just mentally, what a block that is. Come on. Just under six to go in the second quarter. Jackson still trail 4 nothing. Rhodes second from the line, and that won't go either. Anna Lee West with a rebound. It'll be Violet Cook across the line, up to Fessler. Fessler cross court. Or sorry, that's Cook. Cook drives baseline, ran out of room, and coughed it up. Good job by Grayson Rosenberg to just stand her ground. And now a giveaway, and the ball goes off of Raina Rhodes. Both these teams really sloppy right now. Yeah, no one wants the ball in their hands. Kat Ankeny in there for Jackson, replacing Rosenberg. Bircham on the floor as well with Bosch, Webb, and Holland. Here's Anna Lee West with a shot, rattles in and out. Rebound off the hands of Aunt Bertram, but into the hands of Lucy Webb. Lucy with five and a half to go in the half, brings it across the line. Lucy pulls up. Cross court is open, Holland on the backside. Double team, she tries a behind the back pass, intended for Webb, stolen by Morrison. Braylon goes down to the left hand layup, no good, and Bertram's gonna draw the foul. And Ooh, Allison went down hard. She's holding her head. I'm worried about that. I was ready to say that was great defense from Allison Bertram yeah. because she was able to stop the fast break. But yes, her feet were unfortunately moving as she was sideways to the rim. Morris into the line. She hits about half she takes from the stripe. And a chance to make it a five-point game. And no, off the back iron. Barker's going to come in for Cook. Yeah, Stark Valley or Evanston really trying to go big here because, I mean, yeah, it's just shoot, and you don't really have bigs. you got rebounders. They are. Barker's playing. Barker and West are playing a lot more than I usually see them play, the two freshmen. 
With Lonsway with two fouls, I think Coach Barker says, ah, I'll just go big. Devin's to basketball, Fessler will inbounds. 5.17 to go in the half, they're up 4-0. Fessler looking around, has an open Morrison, baseline three, too short. Rebound, Annalie West, her putback won't go, and she traveled anyway. Good job by Burcham behind. I thought Burcham was going to get the foul from behind, but the travel. Here's Webb. Jackson, one basket cuts the lead in half. The problem is that one basket's been elusive. Five minutes to go now in half. Lucy Webb lost it to Fessler. Oh, Lucy trying to get it back from Fessler is going to draw the foul. Her first team second. Her second. Team second, sorry. Fessler inbounds to Madison Brown, the sophomore. Morrison, baseline drive, Barker. She never got there because Mads Hollins put the clamp down on her. But she will draw the foul. And here comes the whistles as Jackson's defense is now catching up with them. <laughs> yeah. Their aggression's been fantastic, but now they're being too aggressive. With too many Just fouls. Hollins first. Barker does get a shooter's roll there. 51% free throw shooter makes it 5 nothing. Grayson Rosenberg back in as Coach Shockley says, I got to challenge West and Barker somehow. As Barker sets up for the back end here. 5 nothing. Evanston, 4.53 to go. In a game that is going to struggle to get the double digits for either team. As Barker eyes this one. She's of the Barker legendary name in Evanston. There's been a bunch of them. This is Cassie, the freshman. She hit them both. Six nothing. Bosch looking for Hiero. No, she finds Kat Ankeny. Ankeny working on Anna Lee West. And just did dribble it out of bounds on that far side. Tough, tough call. That black line. What part of that black is inbounds or out of bounds? None the, of it? The All inside of side part okay. of the black. Morrison around the horn to Brown. Now to Fessler, now to Barker, and a tie-up between Burcham and Barker. Allison playing tough. She banged her head on the floor not long ago, and she's playing a little, a little chip on her head. Yeah, maybe, she maybe she'll, for, she'll forget how to miss. Just become completely automatic. Yes. Bounce pass inside of West. That's challenged by Rosenberg in a clean block. Grayson, a difference maker when she is in there down low. And Coach Shockley needs Holland and Rosenberg. And it looks like going to need them in the game all game. Fessler far side to Brown. Inside to West. West, Anna Lee can't get it to go. Fight for the rebound. It's Burcham pulls it down. Swinging elbows. Get out of the way. Here comes Zoe Bosch. Zoe trying some speed down the right block. And it's West. Barker with a big block. Sorry. Cassie. All oh, ball. That's all right. Zoe did the right thing. I mean, you don't have a point yet. Zoe just took it right down the right block. Inbounds pass to Rosenberg. Grayson lost the handle. Two girls dive for the ball. It's going to be another jump ball, I believe. Are they going to see out of bounds? Wow. And we just bodies hitting the floor. The refs just overruled themselves. One ref said Jackson ball. The other one said Edmondson. Okay. Yeah, one was like out of bounds. The one on the sideline was saying out of bounds off of Jackson, even though it did look like another tie-up. 6 nothing, 4 11 to go in the half. And it's Madison Brown, the sophomore, trying to find, oh, Barker, but it's stolen away. Burcham pulls up her dribble and just could not pin that pivot flip to the floor. And she dragged it just a little bit. Now Allison's going to sit and think. And Coach Shockley chewing her ear. She does not want to hear it. Bardsley with it now for Evanston. They're up 6-0, just under four to go. Morrison to Barker, cross-court Fessler. Emmy Fessler trying to cross-court back to Barker, but that did not get there. Zoe Bosch with the intercept. Zoe ahead to Hierro. She's open, she'll try it. No, can't get it to go. Anna Lee West pulls down the glass. 
Wow, still 6-0 Devils. Morrison, as Lonsway has been parked for this whole second quarter for Evanston. And a double trouble by Barnsley, and she's looking at Coach Parker saying, what's a double dribble? <laughs> if I can read lips. 331, Jackson still looking for points here in the first. It's been a messy defensive battle. Inbounds pass to Webb, Lucy with Barnsley on her. Lucy crossover dribble and now over the line. Now shoves Barsley, trying to give herself some room. Bounce pass to Hero. Hero watched by Cook back to Webb. Webb takes a screen from Hero. Bounce pass into Zoe, who is baseline cutting. And her shot didn't get there, but it's because Cassie Barker put the hit on. I think it's going to be Barker. It is. Barker's second. Zoe to the line. Pretty good free throw shooter at 50%. And her first no good. It is that basket, man. We got to switch sides. <laughs> that second half can't come soon enough. Yeah, watch it. At halftime, we'll just get like 20 straight points. Yeah. Zoe can't get that one either, but gets her own rebound. Another look at it here. Bosch, top of the key. Webb's wide open. She'll try it. Go! Three, although they're going to call it a two, it looks like. Yeah, I think her foot was on the line. All right, 6-2. That Durant works. Style. Points are points. Here's Devin Ham to Bardsley. JC got loose a hero for a moment. Her shot error and out of bounds. Jackson Ball now hot off that jumper from Lucy Webb. She had a good look. She had all day to fire that one. Yeah, I mean, being able to erase that zero, that's got to do wonders for the morale. Lucy Webb with it again, full court pressure from Barker's crew on the red side, and Lucy's across the line just shoving Bardsley all the way down. Now she's in trouble, got to find some help, and does. She got whacked on the arm by Bardsley. That's JC's first, I believe, team third. And with 2.36 to go at 6-2, Jackson down four, but a chance to get into the locker room here at least tied. Let's see. Morrison challenges the inbounds from Bosch. Cross court finds Hero. Now into Mads Holland. She bumps with Devonham. Back to Hero to Webb. She's wide open again. That shot no good. Right in the arms of West. Evanston ball, 2.20 to go. In the half. That pass almost picked off. Now it is. Now it isn't. Morrison just did get it back. Good anticipation by Zoe. Bosch watching Morrison. Near side here to Cook, back out to Morrison. Evanston susceptible to turning the ball over again without Ronsway. Here's Cook, she runs into Rosenberg. That's tipped out of bounds, last by Holland. Good job, Grayson does such a good job stepping up. When you get away from your man on the perimeter she, and you go uh, to the rim, here comes Grayson. And she does a great job of being straight up as well, trying as hard as possible not to foul, which is very great defense. Cook in the corner, almost double team, gets it out to Bardsley. JC back to Cook, Violet back to JC. Bardsley to Morrison around the Debenham. She'll try a baseline jumper, no good. Rebound, Cook right over the top of Webb. And yeah, Violet's going to get rung up for that. Cook's got good height for a freshman. This team in a couple, three years is going to be really exciting. They're so young. That's Cook's first, team fourth, 145 to go. Floating pass up ahead. Lucy Webb shot, and that's blocked by Anna Lee West. Good job by West. That was all ball. And here's something that Jackson needs to work on is learning to jump stop, pump fake, get the defender in the air, and then go up for the layup. That's, that's an advanced move, but it's certainly the next step, yes. Here's Mads Holland. She got open for a good look, but that short shot won't go. Rebound out of bounds, and that's last off Morrison, I believe. That's what Mac thinks, and yes, the stripes agree. No, they don't. Oh. It's going to be Evanston ball, 135 to go. The yeah, that definitely looked like they tried to save it from going out of bounds. He touched it right as it was going out of bounds. It is the furthest away from us. The referees are much closer. And now they will get it right. Yes, 
I don't know who the head official is, but it looks like the head official came in to overturn that call. It's Liam McPeak on the appeal, and he overturns the original lower court decision. Good job, Lamp. Zoe Bosch on Morrison. Zoe pulls up, finds a nice open roads, and Reina gets blocked. That's Anna Lee West with the block, and they're going to get her for the foul as well. It looked like Rhodes might have traveled. It looked like West might have got all ball, and neither of those things happened. Reina is going to go to the line. And she got it off her trademark backdoor cut. Yes! Love when Reina does that. Rhodes playing her final game on this hardwood. 125 to go, her second shot won't go. Anna Lee West with a rebound, Mads Hollins with an unnecessary reach in. That's a long way from your own basket. And that's her second. Evanston ball with 80 seconds to go in the half. Red Devils lead 6-2. Debenham, Ryan back out to Cook over to West. Or sorry, Fessler. Fessler to Morrison inside to West, and West ties up with Zoe Bosch. Good job. Anna Lee is huffing and puffing. She's seen more action than she usually does in this game. Is you're right, Matt. Coach Barker is trying to go big here against our girls. Lucy Webb with it now, working on Violet Cook. Webb pulls up her dribble to Grayson Rosenberg. Got a minute exactly to go in the quarter. There's Raina Rhodes on that cut to the lane, and she gets bumped. That caused her to take steps on the travel turnover. Evanston ball. Over the line is Violet Cook to Fessler. Whoa, almost got away from her. Up to Morrison. Morrison. Cross court to Cook. Violet, she took steps trying to get around Lucy Webb. And yeah, it's been defense and self implosion. A combination of both is why we're only at 6 2. Yeah, so many fouls you call it a vacation. Or so many travels you call it a vacation. <laughs> Frequent flyer miles stacking up here for both teams. Bosch to Holland. She's open for a shot. Six, four, Jackson within two. 30 seconds to go in the half. Cook has it now for the Devils. Over to Fessler. Emma Fessler, cross court heave. That ball's in the air forever. And now out of bounds. They're going to say it's off Ryan Debenham. And Jackson Balls. Zoe Bosch got a big smile on her face. Jackson Ball with 23 seconds. Chance to tie and hit the halftime. With a 6-6 tie, it sounds weird to say. Reyna trying to dribble her way out of trouble here as Evanson showing some pressure. Up ahead to Zoe Bosch. She'll try one, long one. That's too short. Anna Lee West with a rebound. West pushes the pace on the far side. Looking for Cook, but it comes all the way to Fessler. Fessler to Morrison to Devin Ham. Her shot, no good. And that's how we'll end the half with the score, Evanston six, Jackson four. Whoa. Well, it'll take us all uh, eight seconds to cover the highlights when we get back on the halftime show, but we'll do it anyway. Coming right back to you from Jackson High School Gymnasium as you're enjoying Bronx basketball on KZ95, the Jackson Hole Radio. He runs across, goes to the red part of the section. Uh... Black team has it, white team is not playing people down like they did before. Oh, it looks like they're, uh, they're lining up to do something. And shoots, and boom goes down. Oh, he's gonna get more than one shot. Oh, shooting again. And the dynamite does not go boom that time. Play by play is hard. Uh, so is Jackson Hole Real Estate. Get a pro. McPeak Group proudly supporting the Bronx on their march toward a state championship. Great Northern Coffee. Jackson's own coffee roaster has been roasting and blending a wide selection of coffee since 1979. A warm fire, friendly faces, and a cup of Great Northern Coffee. Just a thing to kick off our Bronx and Cowboy teams. Try our Bronx blend. 
a heavy, rich cup of coffee that will run you over like the Bronx football team. Great Northern Coffee, available at grocery stores and coffee shops around the state. Also available online at greatnortherncoffee.com. Back courtside and missed Anna Rebel. Almost had that half court shot. Yeah, it's great to see lots of alumni here today. Yeah. Myself included. It's, it's always yeah, Matt, great. You got to go down there and take the half court shot. Yeah, you guys do. It's senior afternoon here in Jackson. Last time these seniors will be on this floor. Uh, because we had a Green River next week for regionals and then Casper for state. So never again in this building in the black hole. And a bittersweet moment. Well, what happened in that first half? Or should we talk about what didn't? Not a lot of shots. Yes, I. the defensive intensity on both teams was fantastic. It's not very often you're going to see a halftime score of six to four in any high school sporting event across the United States of America. Um, this has got to be up there in a record book for lowest <laughs> scoring half in yeah. the history of high school 4A high school basketball in Wyoming. But there's a lot of great deep, great things on both teams. You like to see it. Both game, both teams know that this win is up for grabs. In second half, it's going to be like, who wants it more? Because both teams are showing that they really want it. There's been a lot of 50-50 balls. Ball's just been on every part of the court today. And Jackson's getting good looks. They just got to fall. And that's been the common theme this whole season. Yeah, it's really just been the defensive showing from Evanston. A lot of inside Jackson drives has just been shut down by their big. Like, pretty harsh, like, LeBron blocks, like, and I mean, it's been good because it sends Jackson to the line, but what have they made from the line? Nothing. Yeah, points hard to come by. I I think when we can start shooting at the other basket, number one, and there might be something to that. Uh, that might help us out, but you got to feel pretty good. I mean, they, as good as a coach can feel going to the locker room having just four points under your belt at this point because you're only down two, six, four. At the half, uh, four jacks. I mean, what other than the obvious guys? You, you color analysts are paid the big bucks to come up with those real nuggets on what we got to do better. Obviously, we got to score more, but how? What is Coach Shockley telling them right now? How can we generate some more points? Uh, I mean, first it comes from the charity strike. They got four good chances yeah. to go to the stripe. Uh, I think Evanston had 4,000 in the first half, 5,000 in the second half. They've been generating fouls, but they have just not hit it from the stripe. Same with open looks. It's really just been you need to increase in making shots. Very good point because Evanston does boast some good aggressive bigs. Uh, Barker, West, and Debenham are all going to make contact a lot. So I think, yes, there is opportunity to draw those fouls. What else you want to do, Mac? I would say limit the turnovers because the longer they have the ball or the more times and opportunities they have the ball, they're more likely and more prone to scoring. So if they're giving it away, that gives Evanston the chance to score the ball more and just keep taking care of the ball and getting those possessions are huge to an offense. And Jackson needs to limit the turnovers if they want to get a win today. And you look at uh, the similar matchups, and the girl, the Jackson Bronx, I, I know the girls have not won in, what, like two and a half years now. We all know the numbers. But look at, they, they're down just 6-4 to Evanston. Evanston beat Green River this year and played Star Valley really close. I mean, Evanston's not, this girls' team is not great, but they're not pushovers either. And you're, you're this close to getting that first W. Can you imagine on senior night, it would be huge. Uh, that would be very insane, especially with a pretty good sized crowd today for Saturday game. It is senior day, but yeah, we got a good crowd. This is definitely the most, the largest crowd I've seen for the girls varsity all season. 
It'd be yeah, it's going to be very, very fun. Fun atmosphere as it is every year. I love the game. Uh, Rosenberg, we've talked about her and her defense down low along with Holland. They've done a real good job on on Barker and West who've played minutes that I didn't think we would seen coming. You know, they've been out there a bunch and a lot of it has to do with Lonsway's two fouls. I would imagine Emma's going to be out there to start the second half and we'll see a different look from Evanston. But Jax is just, yeah, um, I'm not a color guy, so I can state the obvious. We got to make some shots. I mean, we're getting some looks. That ball's got to go down. Absolutely. And it'll be interesting to see if more of the same continues, if this final score could be in the tens. Yeah. Final score could be 12 to 10. Softball yeah. game. Yeah, I mean, Jackson really just been like kind of I guess like driving in, but the shots have just been jumpers. Like the first shot was the Kevin Durant kind of Lucy Webb on the line too, and then you got the long floater from Mads Holland. I mean, not really any like layups or long threes or. Yeah. No, not and and nothing of highlight reel. I should have got that Lucy Webb jumper, but yeah, nothing. Nothing's gonna make ESPN highlight show tonight so far. But that's the kind of game, that's the way I think this Jackson girls is going to get their first W. I don't picture it being this 64-62 uh, in OT. <laughs> you know, it's going to be one of these kind of who wants it more slugfest. But that's all right. Whatever gets you the dub. Evanston girls are out early. If that means anything to you, they're the first ones out to come out and take their warm-ups. And we're just a couple of minutes away from starting the second half. The score at the half, Evanston 6, Jackson 4. You're enjoying Bronx basketball on KZ95 of the Jackson Hole Radio Network. Hey, I'm Allie Lane from Jackson Hole Young Life. Do you remember what it's like to be a teenager? It can be really tough trying to navigate sports, academics, relationships with family and friends, not to mention the added stress of social media, phones, and screen time. Young Life believes that every teen deserves to know that they are loved and their story matters. Young Life leaders enter the world of teens, focusing on what matters to them, fun, adventure, friendship, and a sense of significance. If you love teenagers as much as we do, there's more info at our website, jacksonhole.younglife.org, to learn more. He runs across, goes to the red part of the section. Uh... Black team has it, white team is not playing people down like they did before. Oh. It looks like they're, uh, they're lining up to do something. And shoots, and boom, goes down. Oh, he's going to get more than one shot. Oh, shooting again. And the dynamite does not go boom that time. Play-by-play -play is hard. Uh, so is Jackson Hole Real Estate. Get a pro. McPeak Group proudly supporting the Bronx on their march toward a state championship. Live play-by-play -play coverage of Jackson Bronx Sports continues with Jake Nichols on KZ95. Six, four at the half, not a typo as the Red Devils lead the Bronx. And we get set for the third. There's going to be the senior night activities take place between the two games. We'll try to capture as much as we can for uh, friends and family without yakking it up too much. But that'll be coming up at the end of this game. Both teams strategizing. <laughs> it's one of those times where I, I don't know what you do as a coach. I, I'm not thinking you're, you're drawing up too many complicated things. This is all cheerleading at this point. You know, telling the girls, you know, just pumping their tires. You're in this. We're in this. This is ours. Go get it. Evanston now shooting at that small basket as Lonsway is back in there. Her pass intended for Morrison almost tipped away. Lonsway bounce pass to Bardsley. Back to Lonsway, back to J.C. Bardsley. Back door, Fessler, she'll try the baseline jumper, no good, and Bosch with one of her, I'd say rare rebounds, but Zoe gets a lot of rebounds from her athleticism, and now Jackson turns it over. They just can't get empty trips like that, can't have empty trips. Morrison. Gets away from Bosch momentarily. Now Zoe picks up the loose change, but she might have also picked up the foul. She did. Her first, team first of the second half. 
Just underway here in quarter number three, 6 4 Evanston. They have the ball. Barnsley looking for somebody open. Finally, he's going to try one of Morrison that gets knocked out of bounds. And yeah, it is a combo of poor offensive execution and good defense. <laughs> like, oh my. Yeah, I mean, Jackson's tempo has just been like too much for their own good. They, I think they should slow it down, kind of just make a little more game planning. Bardsley to Lonsway. She took that preliminary step as well. Emma, I don't like it any more than you do. And the turnover gives the ball to Jackson. Referee telling Zoe where to stand. Morrison's going to be <laughs> right with her on the Red Devil bench. Bounce pass into Lucy Webb. Webb working on Lonsway. Pushes her away for a moment. Now across the line. Emma looking for an opportunity to sneak her hand in there. Swipes but comes up empty. Zoe Bosch meanwhile rolls one in and out. Oh, close. Yeah, this, this rim has a lid just on the bottom of it. Yeah, Holland bumps with Lonsway and she's going to get her third. And Coach Barker is going to go immediately and get her out. Yeah, maybe a good play by Lonsway there is... You know, you had wide open Lucy Webb right under the basket. And getting ready to check in will be Violet Cook. They still don't have that on the board, but that's Lonsway's third, I'm pretty sure. And she comes out. It'll be a tough afternoon for her. Here's Zoe Bosch looking inbounds to Lucy Webb. Webb, top of the key, shoves bars late. Refs are letting them do all kinds of stuff to each other. Cross court pass, that's picked off by Emma Fessler. Fessler going by herself, right block, shot no good. Rhodes did a good job. And yeah, that's out of bounds. Jackson Ball, good job by Raina to get back there, not allow Fessler the easy layup. And doing it without fouling as well. Yep. Full court pressure again from Barker's Red Devil crew. Bounce pass into Webb, Webb on Bardsley. Lucy gets away from her across the line. Now pulls up her dribble and waits for everybody to settle into place. Bounce pass to Holland, stolen away again by Emmy Fessler. Fessler's layup no good, but it goes to Cook. The rebound does, Ryan Debenham to Morrison. Near side to Fessler, ties up with Bosch and she'll get the reach in, tough call. And it's interesting how Evanston's had a, like many fast break opportunities and they just can't convert on the layup. It seems that the layup has become the hardest shot. <laughs> Every shot's been the hardest shot. Fessler upset with herself. Two steals and two missed layups. Here's Cassie Barker hits from deep. And it's 8-4. Barker normally gets her paint points. That one from distance. Zoe Bosch with it now. 8-4, Evanston Barker steals it away from Zoe. That's a tie-up between Morrison, Barker, and Bosch. And the arrow will favor the home team. 5.52 to go, 8-4, Evanston. Morrison keeping an eye on Zoe Bosch. She looks around. I think she wants here. I just won't look at her. No, and now she time out Coach Shockley, and he's standing right by. <laughs> so he, and is upset at how long it took that inbounds pass to happen. She had here. Oh, I thought she was looking her off and then was just going to sneak one over there, but she never did. And it took so long. Shockley's like, I can't stand it anymore. And that's been a problem over the course of the season. It's been hard to get inbounds passes, just inbounds. And sometimes the Bronx just got to look for the easy one first because once that opportunity is taken away, it becomes very hard to get the ball in. Yeah, once, it, it's the, every second after three seconds seems like a minute long, like, yeah. It gets super scary if you don't trigger in right away. Here's Bosch, she'll try it again, and bounce pass to here. Oh, they might have drawn something up there. Bosch gets it back, ties up with Cook, and that's a quick jump ball, and now Evanston will take possession. 8-4, Devils, 5.48 to go in the third. Jackson has not scored in this half. Only Barker has. There's Morrison for the Red Devils to Bardsley. JC back to Morrison, far side corner to Cassie Barker. Now back out here, top of the key. Bardsley floats one into Devonham, kicks it back out. 
Now to Cassie Barker. Her shot no good, but Rosenberg challenged that. She'll pick up the foul. That's only her second, which is not bad, having to work the whole afternoon against Barker and West. And now Evanston's doing the strategy that maybe Jackson should be doing a little bit more, drawing the fouls as Jackson's already committed three fouls in the first two and a half minutes of the third quarter. Yes, and you'll see the fresh troops because of that. Ankeny checks in for Holland. Rhodes comes out. Also for, we got Gross, Rosenberg here, all Ankeny. Webb and Bosch on the floor. West missed her first, here's her second. Her Barker, sorry, and she misses that one. Grayson tracks down the rebound. 5.20 to go on the third, 8-4. Evanston leads. Lucy Webb with it, working on the freshman, Violet Cook. Lucy gonna drive the left block, coming over to help out. Anna Lee West with the big block. Yeah, I mean, that's been the story of this game so far. Anytime Jackson's really gone to the rim, it's just been block, 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 block. Yep, and Liam, you were hoping our girls could pick up some fouls doing it, and they have done a little of that, but that one clean from West. Here's Rosenberg, Grayson out to Hero. Lost it momentarily, but it takes it away from Fessler. Now Melanie needs some help. And a pass to Webb never got there because of the defensive cook, but she knocked it out of bounds. 5 0 1 to go in the third. Zoe Bosch will inbounds here. And again, finding somebody open, a problem, finds Webb. Lucy pulls up her dribble and now needs help to Zoe Bosch. Bosch working on the taller West, kicks it out to Rosenberg. She'll let one fly, that's short. Good job by Barker to come out and challenge. Now Barker collides, or West collided with Fessler. Barker with a reverse layup. That won't go, but she's fouled. This has been a very physical game, including friendly fire. As West and Fessler banged heads. Barker to the line again. Pretty good free throw shooter, but she missed them both last time. 4.41 left. This one's too short. Holland coming in for Rosenberg. So Shockley trying to keep the bigs fresh, but now you really challenged vertically as West and Barker are in there for the Reds, along with Cook, who's got good size. And the second one is in, so we're at 9-4. Zoe Bosch on uh, Violet Cook over to Webb. Webb blows right by Morrison. Now gets it to Holland. Holland baseline drive. She gets around West and gives the pass right to Emma Fessler. Now good job to get by West, and then it's just not knowing where you're going with the ball. Cassie Barker runs into trouble. Holland tripped her. Webb might have reached in. Could have been either one of them. They're yeah. going to say Lucy. Yeah, Jackson yeah. just already in the bonus. In the bonus. Uh, yeah, the bonus. Wow. Not yeah. even halfway through the third. Yeah, right. <laughs> going to the line now. That's Webb's third, by the way. As Barker seems like she's been there all second half. She's got that 10-4. And it's going to be a slow death by free throws at this rate, unless Jackson can hit some. Cassie with her second off the back iron, no good here over the rebound. Quick whistle here. Lane violation. What was that? Yeah. Lane violation against the Red Devils, which means the free throw does not count. Emma Lonsway. Checking back in with her three fouls, replacing Morrison. Braylon's done a good job. She's had to carry a lot of the guard load. Inbounds pass. Oh, boy, when she let that go, I thought that's not a good idea, Zoe. But Lucy got there. Webb with it now. Gets a nice screen from here. Oh, Lucy's still with it. Now Fessler picks her up. Fessler reaching in and yelling at her as she does so. And now the turnover. As West with the steal, on way up to West. Anna Lee West puts it up and in. Anna Lee West makes it 12-4, Devils. Zoe Bosch trying to push the pace, bumps into Cook. Cook was not set. Violet slow to get up, and that was the case there. I think Zoe's trying to get back 10 points on one possession. <laughs> she was on a mission to get to the rack. 
Yes, and I think she should continue to do that as the fouls will start coming along. Allison Bircham in for the first time this second half. She hit her head in the first half and then was just so upset. Hopefully she's got him, herself reined in. Here she is, Bircham with it now. And trying Anna Lee West lost the handle. Out of bounds, it'll be Evanston ball. And Coach Shockley says something to Allison. She nods, yeah, I know what I did wrong. Well, they're gonna say West got a hand on that, I guess. Jackson ball, Zoe. Into here, oh, Melanie had an open look for a minute. Bircham to Holland. She'll try a long one from the top of the key. Off the glass, no good. Lucy Webb scoops up the loose change, though. Finds a backdoor cut from Bosch, and her shot won't go either. And here comes Fessler. Fessler, look out from behind here. Oh, but pulls it in. There's Lonsway baseline drive. Shot left short. West with a rebound. Annalie puts it up and in. Annalie West leads all. Scores on the Evanston side of things. That's six for her. She's having a pretty good game. Yeah, Jackson yes. quickly went from being down by two to being down by ten. That happened real fast. Tom out on the floor will go as well. You're enjoying Bronx basketball in KZ95 of the Jackson Hole Radio Network. Hey, I'm Allie Lane from Jackson Hole Young Life. Do you remember what it's like to be a teenager? It can be really tough trying to navigate sports, academics, relationships with family and friends, not to mention the added stress of social media, phones, and screen time. Young Life believes that every teen deserves to know that they are loved and their story matters. Young Life leaders enter the world of teens, focusing on what matters to them, fun, adventure, friendship, and a sense of significance. If you love teenagers as much as we do, there's more info at our website, jacksonhole.younglife.org, to learn more. listening to live coverage of Jackson Hole High School Sports on KZ95. Coach Shockley going over a few things with the girls. I just noticed Harley Rommel every time I see her. This feels like a Harley kind of a game. We need Rommel. We need something. 14-4. Yeah, Liam pointed it out. No points for the Bronx here in the second half, which began 6-4 Evanston. It's now 14-4 Evanston. Zoe Bosch will inbounds. More pressure from the Devils. J Jackson's done a good job of not letting the full court pressure bother him. Rosenberg tries a long one. That's short off the top of the backboard now. Scramble for the rebound. And again, girls colliding and a tie up between West and Bosch, or Rosenberg rather. And the arrow flipped our way this time. Good job by Grayson to battle in there. Zoe Bosch looking for somebody open. Floats one out to Rosenberg. Inside for Bosch, and somebody got a hand on that. And now Zoe shoves Lon's way to the floor, and she'll pick up a foul. Oh, that's Holland. Yeah, some of Jackson's best performers accumulating fouls pretty fast. I mean, the only point scorers, each of three. Lon's way to the line, 41% free throw shooter. The sophomore averaging five points a game. She has come on the beginning of this year. I don't know that she was even a starter. And as the year has progressed, Coach Barker has recognized that that's their point guard. Combined with the bigs underneath, like Cassie Barker and Anna Lee West, and some leadership from Debenham, the senior, this team is really starting to come together later in the season. That shot left short, rebound Rosenberg, and West got caught, reaching over the top. Three minutes exactly to go. That's only the third uh, third team foul for Evanston. Inbounds to Hero. That's knocked off her hands and out of bounds. Evanston ball. Morrison right in front of the Gatorade jug. Braylon will inbounds to Lonsway. Lonsway watched by Hero to Fessler. Back to Morrison. Morrison floats one inside to West, and that got busy real fast. Hero reached in and might have been hurt. Not a lot of contact there. Yeah, it's going to be Rosenberg. Boy, the stuff they let go, and then the whistle for that is 
a little ticky tack. Fourth on Rosenberg. Jackson needs Grayson like Evanston needs Lonsway. And first one here from West is no good. 15 4, oh, Evanston yeah, leads it. Jackson. Holland will replace Grayson. So Shockley can only go half big to deal with West, who's shooting this shot now. And Cassie Barker, who you see in that far block, those shots up and in. And it's 16 4, Red Devils. Raina Rhodes bounced into it. Lucy Webb. Webb trying to dribble out of trouble and does. Hero sets a nice pick on the gigantic Barker. That's a mismatch in size. Here's Holland working on West. Scoop shot in. That's Holland. Yeah, we saw her attempt a shot like that earlier. It didn't go, but it looks like, you know, maybe the change of the rims. And Jackson really needed that layup as their offense was getting really dry as Evanston was starting to push away in the game. And it's like deja vu almost, as in Evanston, it was very close the first half, and now Evanston pulling away. But now Jackson just got the steal and see if they could score again. I just missed the highlight uh, replay. It was a little late on it. But Webb bounce pass to Holland. Holland with Anna Lee West on her. Top of the key to Webb. Over to Hero. Hero working on Fessler. Melanie kick out now to Matt. She wants this. She will take it. And just short. She had a long, long look at it. And the rebound, Barker gives it over to Lonsway. Cross court, Fessler. Now to Morrison. Oh, Morrison's pass to Barker, but she was cutting down the baseline. And Morrison was passing to the ghost of Barker rather than the real Cassie. Turnover gives Jackson the ball. Holland, she'll dribble it. Nobody picks her up. Fires ahead to Bertram. Allison, pump fake. Puts a shot up. Good! Allison Bertram cuts it to 16-8. Fessler with it now for the Red Devils. Top of the key, Lonsway. Back to Emma Fessler. To Lonsway to Morrison. Lonsway. Morrison inside floater to West working on Mads Hollins. That shot no good. And a lead with the rebound and the putback no. But that was Lucy Webb who made sure that didn't happen. And I got my dream come true. Harley Rommel's ready to check in and do some damage. Go get him, Harley. West to the line. 122 to go in the third. Jackson Trail 16-8. Anna Lee, a good free throw shooter, 73% to lead the team, and gets the roll there. Rommel and Bosch check in for Webb and Hero. It's been a game for the power forwards and centers, hasn't it? Guards really haven't done anything for either team. Yes, Zoe Bosch, the leading scorer for Jackson, hasn't scored yet, and Lonsway for Evanston has only got one point. Second one, no good. Rebound, Mads Hollins. Mads against Cook. Over to Bertram. Allison, hot off that shot. Pulls up her dribble, gives it to Zoe. She'll try a long three. And that did everything but stay down. West with a rebound. Good look, good shot. Cannot believe that wouldn't fall. Bardsley, far side, Morrison. Morrison challenged by Rommel. As inside pass to Anna Lee West, she gets triple teamed out to Bardsley. Inside to Fessler, that never got there. Mads Hollins denies the pass. And Zoe Bosch picked up the loose change. Now she's going to travel. Tough, tough call as Zoe was trying to get going faster than her dribbling would allow. Emma Lonsway replaces Morrison. You still got... Actually, Evanston getting a little smaller now. West is not in, and neither is Barker. So you got to finally, they're reduced in size a little bit. Here's Bardsley cross court, got Lonsway. One touch pass to Cook. Back to Fessler here. Back to Cook. Violet just doesn't want to shoot. She had a chance. Fessler watched by Bosch, who comes right out and busts her. Oh, and that was a 50-50 call, but Zoe's going to get it. Zoe just came right up on her. Tough call for Bosch. It's her third. Madison Brown will check in here in a minute for 
Coach Barker's Devils. And to the line is Fessler, not a great free throw shooter, 36% of the year. Spins it and misses it. 26 seconds to go in the third, 17 to eight, nine point game. Doable, Fessler's second rattles in and out. Rebound, Burcham pulls it away from Cook, who surrenders. Burcham up ahead to an open Zoe. Bosch lost the handle as she looked to see what she wanted to do with it. And lost the ball for a moment. They're gonna say it's off Evanston. Oh, a foul on Barnsley with the reach in, okay. Bosch into Burcham. She'll try a shot over the top of Devin Hare. That's in, good. 17-10, lead cut to seven. Fessler takes a look at the clock, hands it to Bardsley. Back to Fessler, to Cook. She'll try a baseline shot, no good. Rebound off the foot of Brown and Jackson Ball. 2.7 seconds when they got to go the length of the court. Hail Mary, let's go, Hail Mary. Yeah. Full of grace, says Burcham. <laughs> I thought when she let it go, I had a chance. It's going to come up short. That's how the third will end, but the Jackson Bronx show a little pushback here. After three, Evanston 17, Jackson 10. Bronx basketball on KZ95 of the Jackson Hole Radio Network. Experience Jackson Hole like a local. Recently renovated, the 49er boasts a new lobby, extended continental breakfast, indoor swimming pool, fitness facility, and 12-person outdoor hot tub. Located on Pearl Street, the 49er is just three short blocks from Jackson's greatest bars and restaurants, where you'll find your home away from home. Enjoy your time in Jackson as part of the town square ends, and stay at the 49er Inn & Suites. You're watching and listening to live coverage of Jackson Hole High School Sports on KZ95. Take a peek into the bench here for the Jackson Lady Bronx. Coach Shockley talking some things over. Jackson may be trying to get back into this one. Been a weird game. Certainly not a lot of scoring and not like... I thought it was going to be. It's just no guards are doing anything. It's been all bigs, which is okay. Yes, it's been a very fun game. If you're a defensive lover, if you love defense, this, has been a, this is the game for you. But it's interesting how Jackson more than doubled their score in the third quarter, and so did Evanston. So the scoring did come alive just a little bit more in the third quarter. Webb with it now as we begin the fourth. Jackson down seven, but they have the ball. Lucy Webb on Emma Lon's way. Webb pulls up her dribble, needs help. Rosenberg was setting a screen, but you got to get open, Grayson. Now it's Reyna. She picks up a double team, bumps, and that's Liam's call. Get to the rack, draw the foul. She did. Yeah, they're going to need that starting off fast. I mean, if Jackson can get in the bonus pretty quickly, it it's the could third, help uh, The third on Bardsley, just the first of this quarter, so you're a long way from going to the stripe. Bosch tries a three. Too strong, rebound Barker. Cassie's gonna go by herself, tipped away by Zoe Bosch. Barker helping the ref out, pointing at Zoe, saying she hit it. The ref's got it right. Great job by Zoe to stop the fast break. It could have been an easy two for Evanston. Yeah, Barker has got those long strides, but Zoe caught her and knocked it out of bounds. Long's way with a three, no good. Rebound Bardsley, she's knocked down, and no call to Evanston fans who are here wanted something, and here's Mads Holland. She runs over Bardsley. That shot won't go. The rebound, Evanston. Referees have put the whistles away. Lonsway bounce pass to Morrison, to Barker, and she gets whacked, and I think it's Rosenberg. And that's her fifth. Rosenberg's gonna be down. Oh. But it won't oh. be on Rosenberg. It's gonna be on Raina Rhodes. Caught a break there, yeah. Rhodes, her first, sends Barker to the line. 51% free throw shooter. That's Hannah checking in with the scorekeeper. I think Andrew wanted to make sure the scorekeeper knows 11 points and he's in the thousand. <laughs> he was like double checking. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, meanwhile, Barker makes the front end, 18-10. Cassie eyes the back. And she's got it. Hits them both, 19-10. 
Jackson's going to need to make every possession count now as whoa, Zoe got a little out of control, and that's going to be an over and back. We've seen Zoe do that a couple of times. Not one of her better games. We've seen her play better, but she's trying to do it all and do it all fast. And it just isn't coming for her right now. Devonham in that pivot gets it out to Bardsley. Good job to pick up a double team and find the open shot from Lonsway, who can't get it. Steal by Morrison to Ryan Devonham. And she took the charge. As Ryan Debhamhead collides with Mads Holland, Holland slowed, or Lucy Webb, sorry, Webb slow to get up. Yeah, that's a good call, because I think Lucy Webb had her feet set and really wasn't going for the rebound, and Debenham just came in and... Debenham is a lot of cowgirl, and that's a collision between her and Webb, and now a double dribble on Holland before we can even get anywhere. Allison Bertram's going to come in for Lucy, who I don't think is 100%. No, coming in for Mads Holland, sorry. 6.44 to go in regulation. 19-10 game. Evanston with the ball now. Lonsway with it. To Morrison. Those two are the guards, and you would never, <laughs> never know it this afternoon as Zoe steals momentarily out of bounds and last off of Bosch. Evanston ball. It's been all about the low post, rebounding, blocking, that kind of stuff, drudgery. None of those beautiful three-point shots, that, you know, that hang in the air. Devin Ham will try a long one. That will go. The rebound, Rosenberg and Burcham and Barker. And uh, I would be quicker to name who did not have a hand on that ball. Jump ball <laughs> will favor the Red Devils. Bardsley will inbounds. Boy, they flock to the ball today. Putting it a little too long. Oh, uh, yeah, ball. Coach Parker's oh, got to get the timeout going. He'll take it. We'll stay here and try to strategize. Could Jackson do it? They're only down nine. What do you think? Well, they got to get rid of the unforced errors, and that's been a big problem throughout the entire game. And so if they can just eliminate that and get quick, easy, fast points because now they got to start pushing the tempo. They can't be taking minute-long possessions. They got to be scoring and they got to be hitting threes and they have been taking good shots. They just haven't been falling and now they need them to fall. That's yeah, I mean, they been just... Been all year. Yeah, I mean, the, the way they came out should be how they're playing right now. Yeah, yeah, it took a long time to get to this sense of urgency and execution, but sluggishly we got here to where we are getting some points six to four at the half if you weren't with us earlier with Evanston leading now it's 19 10 Evanston up 6 15 to go in regulation Barsley with it now for the Devils to Morrison across to Lonsway Lonsway picks up the double team bounce pass calmly to Morrison, baseline, baseline drive Parker away. her shot never got off scramble for the ball and another jump Or a foul. Jump ball. This is going to be a jump ball because Jackson has the possession. Zoe Bosch looking for somebody open. Bounce pass. Nice pass to Rhodes who was moving. Back out to Lucy Webb. Webb working on Lon's way. Lucy walks it to the top of the key to Bertram now. Bertram tries her luck on Devonham. Pulls up her dribble, bounce pass to Rosenberg, didn't get there. Anna Lee West stole it away. Here comes the Devils. Fessler takes a peek behind her. Bosch was coming. There's Fessler with it now to Anna Lee West. Look at Rosenberg shut down that baseline drive. Said, no, Anna Lee, not today. Fessler at this near elbow, far side elbow to Morrison. She'll try a long one, in and out, no good. Bertram with a rebound and the reach in foul here on West, and she's getting up there. That's three on her. That could have been a big dagger for Evanston to get the lead into double digits. Just about went for Morrison, but couldn't buy it, and she's stuck at two points. Zoe Bosch with it now. Floats one to Webb, and that never connected. Lucy could not track it down. So many just unneeded errors from Jackson. 
just yeah. throughout the entire game. Five. 10 to go in regulation. Jackson down nine, but Evans stem with the ball. And likely in no hurry to do much with it here. Lonsway bounce pass to Morrison. Morrison cross court. Fessler Rhodes get a good shot. They're gonna hand on it. Ball rated right knocks it out of bounds. Still Evanston Paul. Mads Holland will check in for Lucy Webb. Jackson gets as big as they've been with Rosenberg, Holland, Bircham, Rhodes, and Bosch. Evanston ball, Fessler with it now. Top of the key to Lonsway. Emma way out here at the logo. Trying to spin away from Zoe, can't do it. Morrison with it, baseline Cook. Cook kicks it back out to Fessler. Thought she was gonna do a step back three, but did not. Emma with it, Rhodes challenges. Morrison inside to West, and she put an elbow right in the face of Grayson. And that was inadvertent. She didn't mean to. And uh, that's going to be the foul. But boy, Rosenberg took it right on the kisser. And she's up. Grayson is tough. I had no idea she was that tough, Kimmy K. All right, she missed all of last year. And boy, the Bronx missed her with that injury that you see that leg wrap. Zoe looking to inbounds here. Gets it to Bertram, right back to Zoe. Bosch trying to put on the speed. Hands off to Mads Holland. Mads with it to Bertram. Bertram on Violet Cook. Picks up a double team. Allison in a little trouble here. Bounce pass out to Mads Holland. Fessler watches. Mads drives the left block, puts a shot up. No good. Getting over to help us Barker. And it was going to be a tough layup. She couldn't get it. Lon's way to Fessler. Fessler cross court Morrison had a look for a moment. Cook into Barker. She'll try his shot, couldn't get it. And this time Rosenberg is the one that puts the herd on. And she's going to be done. Grayson, the senior. As you see her emotional, she's going to foul out in the final game of her basketball career. But what a good game. It's, it's been a Grayson Rosenberg game. Barker to the line with 4.03 to go. Jackson up, or Jackson down nine. Barker eyes it, fires it, and gets it. And the Red Devils have doubled up on Jackson. Now their biggest lead of the day is 10. For Barker, she leads all. Devil scores with nine. West is right behind her, I believe, with eight. And she makes them both. I would not have said coming into this one that it was going to be Barker and West leading the way for the Red Devils. I don't know if Coach Barker would have known that. Here's Bircham. She hits a big one. Allison Bircham with a shot in the timeout. And let's see. They're going to give her two. I guess she was standing on the line. We can confirm that because I think I got the replays. Take a look. As Bircham fires from distance. Oh, I was just a little late. Not too, right. You're not too good at this replay thing. <laughs> well, it's working now at least. But before I can yes. blame the computer, now I can only blame me. Yes. And, and by the way, McPeak, you're fired. No. <laughs> After this game. <laughs> well. You can just shut it. 21-12. Uh, well, boy, for, a, for more than a half there, I thought our girls were going to get that first dub. They... They got in a little bit of a mud fight here with Evanston, and Red Devils finally getting some shots to fall. And it's been Cassie and Anna Lee doing it for Evanston. Yeah, I mean, the story is kind of just if when Evanston puts up a point and Jackson just tries to come back, they'll like lose it a half court or try and drive into the lane and get LeBron James blocked. Jackson led so far by. Allison Bircham, six, four out of Mads Holland. And again, it's just been uh, guards need not apply kind of a game. All the bigs have taken over. Cook will inbounds here for Evanston, gets it to Emma Lonsway. Up ahead to Cassie Parker, double team. And somebody timeout. got a piece of her, I think. Oh, a timeout, yeah. Coach Shockley was pretty sure that nobody made 
enough contact for the foul, but it was Coach Barker's whistle. And we'll go as well with a timeout on the floor. You're enjoying Brock's basketball on KZ95, the Jackson Hole Radio Network. High Country Linen Service has grown with its state-of-the-art facility to be the premier rental service for linens, uniforms, and entry mats. High Country Linen also provides wholesale janitorial supplies, paper products, and earth-friendly cleaning supplies to Jackson Hole, Teton Valley, and beyond. Call 733-2638 or come see us at 355 North Glenwood on the web at highcountrylinen.com. Let's get back to the live action on KZ95. Senior night, and you're seeing one senior down there in the Jackson huddle, number 24, who I didn't get enough basketball out of her for her career. Missed her all last year, and I could do another year of Grayson Rosenberg. Can we redshirt her for the injury season? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I wish. Mean, I mean, with, like, a lot of injuries, it's not, it's not really how you get hurt. It's how you come back. And, I mean, you see that all across many sports. Like in football, for example, Carson Wentz tears ACL, comes back, looks terrible, and wastes a bunch of the Eagles players. And then Adrian Peterson tears ACL, comes back, wins the MVP. How you return from injury. And Grayson, she's been crucial for Jackson this season. Good job by Zoe Bosch to sneak in there and make sure that Cassie Parker didn't have an open look. But it's off her hands out of bounds. Three and a half to go here in regulation. Jackson down 21-12, which is a Rush album, by the way. Yes. You know that, man? Yeah, I oh, love Rush. Wow. Okay. Rock on. Rock on, no, baby, you Canadians. Not real. It's not a real <laughs> band. <laughs> Morrison to Barker, cross court, Lonsway. Bumps hard with Zoe. Here's Fessler open look, and that won't go. Rebound, Lonsway collided as she went in there to try to pick that up, and it has been tough going down low. I, there should be warning signs like uh, you are leaving the ski boundaries at Jackson Hole. Like you are entering the paint. Do so at your own risk. Evanston inbounds. That gets challenged by Holland. Knocked out of bounds, and we'll try it again. 3.09 to go. Bond's way behind underneath her own net as they bunch up and look to break it out. It's to Brown. Brown works it to Cassie Barker, the left-hand hook shot. No good. Rebound, scramble. Down on the ground is Rhodes. Not a surprise. Does it with a smile. Also not a surprise. Hero will check in. The senior replacing Allison Burcham. Oh. As Coach Shockley will try to get his seniors out there for one last look. Inbounds pass. Cook has it now. Cook looking for Lon's play, but Lucy Webb got a hand on that, and it will be out of bounds. Devils. Jackson Ball. Just under three to go. I mean, doable, but now you've scored 12 points all game. You need 10 more. Does not seem likely, but we'll see. Heroes pass to Rhodes. Never got there. Stolen by Barker. Fessler bounce pass to Lonsway. Lonsway will pop shot it. Good. Emma Lonsway, that's three for her on the afternoon. She's been quiet. Yeah, I mean, Jackson's just been a little too sloppy, not getting a lot of movement off the ball. Yeah, Joss not taking care of the ball. Good step back shot there by Boss. Too short, though. Rebound, Anna Lee West gives it to Lonsway. Emma <laughs> runs. Emma put on the brakes, hit reverse, and boy, we got players just falling all over the place. That pass, that's going to be over and back. Lonsway knows it. And Jackson, yeah, it's just been sloppy everywhere. Bircham back in for Jackson as Raina Rhodes, the senior, checks out for a moment. Zoe Bosch will inbounds right in front of Coach Shockley's bench. Morrison watching her. Braylon jumping up and down, doing some jumping jacks. Bosch gets one to Bircham. Allison Bircham got away from Parker for a moment. Bounce pass to Webb. Now back out to Bosch. Zoe hands off to Lucy. It's good Evanston defense. Both teams playing good D. There's a long three from Holland off the mark. Rebound. Evanston. Lonsway comes up with it. Ahead to Emma Fessler. Fessler, she'll just wait for 
reinforcements, hands it to Lonsway, back to Fessler. Fessler to Lonsway to Morrison. Back to Lonsway. And Emma Fessler with a minute 35. Not a lot of urgency here from the Red Devils. Pass floated in. Look, a nice touch pass to Barker, west to Barker, but it wouldn't go. Lonsway thought about it, but she just wants to burn clock. Fessler back to Emma Lonsway. Wide open Barker, but she's not going to shoot either. And this is a long time just run clock. You still got to play here. Somebody was going to need to shoot. Fessler cross court to Barker and a whistle. A push, and that'll be Lucy Webb's fifth. <laughs> Tough way to do well. Boy, for all the colliding they let go on under the basket, those stuff way away from the basket has not been a lot. Time out on the floor. We'll stay here and take a look down at that Jackson bench. Yeah, just too sloppy, guys. I mean, I, I love the defense. I respect the D. And that's certainly been there, but it's also been self-inflicted wounds for both teams, but definitely for Jackson. Yes, and it goes back to the high turnover numbers, really costing the Bronx, like, throughout this quarter when they've needed the urgency to score. They've unfortunately given it back to the Red Devils, and Red Devils have taken advantage and did what they did back in Evanston, really played the second half fluently and together, and that's how they've pulled away once again. What did assistant coach Jake say, keys to the game? Make every possession count. And that's maybe not what they did today. Back on the floor, 23-12, Evanston leads. We're down to the final 69 seconds of this one. The game that began, and we were wondering if anybody would score. How long was it? Zero, zero. Love <laughs> most of the first. <laughs> Inbounds pass and another whistle. And did that take too long, or what happened? Yeah, maybe five seconds. Harley Rama will check in for Mads Holland. So it's Rama, Bertram, Hero, Rhodes, and Bosch on the floor. Inbounds to Raina Rhodes. Raina working on Lon's way. Bounce pass to Bosch. Was a nice one. Back door and Rommel was open. Good look. And that was better ball movement. And Fessler foul was the only reason Rommel didn't go up with that. That was also great vision by Zoe Bosch to find the open cutter. And Harley, good, pretty solid free throw shooter going to the line. And Harley's got that. Good job by Rama, her first point of the game. 101 to go. Jackson down 23, 13, down 10. Harley trying to convert both here and can't get it. Rebound, Evanston. It's, well, tie up. It's going to be Fessler and Bertram tied up with that. And this will get our look at Shayla Nava. Shayla Nava for Jackson here in a minute. Bosch inbounds to Harley Rommel. Rommel working on Ryan Debenham. Hands off to Rayner Rhodes. Drives the right block to Hero. Hero tries to shot, but Cassie, <laughs> Cassie Barker just way taller. Swats that out of the air. Morrison to Lonsway with 40 seconds. Red Devils, Fessler took a look at the clock and now is mugged by Rhodes. As Coach Barcher, Barker tries to explain to Fessler how to protect that ball and run clock. And now Shiloh Nava gets on the court to replace Harley Rommel. Fessler inbounds on that far side to Lonsway, who keeps it on this side of the court, front court. Lonsway to Morrison. Morrison, Nava on her, now back to Lonsway. And again, Evanston content to just try to get out of here with not the prettiest of road wins, but a win just the same. It would be their third of the season, and Lonsway gets bumped down by Hiero and Bertram. Yeah, both teams will be in the bonus from that foul. Allison will pick up her second foul. 
And to the line is Lonsway. Emma with just three on the afternoon. Trying to make it four, and she does. Harley Rommel will come in for Nava as those two keep flip-flopping here in the final minute. Evanston, nobody on the blocks, everybody in the backcourt. Second shot from Lonsway is no good. Rebound Bircham. Allison with 15 seconds left. will pull up at the top of the key to Harley Rommel over to Hero. Melanie puts a move on Fessler down to six seconds. Bircham, bounce pass to Rommel's got an open look. Good! Harley Rommel. And that'll do it. This one a final. And let's stay here for a moment as some of these senior girls, I see uh, Tough for the seniors who will play their final game here, and they include Fort Jackson. Thankfully, not that many. Is there's still such a young team? Melanie Hero, Raina Rhodes, Grayson Rosenberg. Those three will leave us never again, and they've been fun to watch. Yes, indeed, it's fun to see them play for the last couple of years. And Grayson Roseburg, you're right, we didn't get enough of her, and she's just a fantastic ball player defensively. Um, should have taken more shots over the course of the year, but it's all about confidence. And, it's all, and you wonder if she had that full junior year and all that experience, then as a senior, does she just feel way more confident and, and do more? Maybe, probably. I mean, it's all about reps, you know? And if you miss your an entire season. All right, we're gonna pick our MVP of the game. Liam, we'll start with you. Uh, the red girls here. Who do you like? Uh, uh, my Star friends? Valley MVP is gonna be the Jackson Old Bronx. Jackson was really <laughs> shooting themselves in the foot the entire game, and I think that just was the best player for Edmonton. Whoa. What do you got going back? Who's uh what Red Devil did you like tonight? I really like Danielle West, and I also liked Cassie Barker. Both of them freshmen. Both, both the post players did a lots of scoring. Most of Evanston scoring, in fact. Just the combo front court for Evanston really played fantastic today, oh, and they did. It was a front court kind of game. Well. With all respect to you, Emma Lonsway, you know you're my favorite player. I, I watch film on this team, and it's Lonsway that does it all with, with a supporting cast as a sophomore, but not her day to day and not a day for the backcourt. It was the bigs. And, uh, you know, Cassie had a great game, Barker, but I, Anna Lee West is the one I didn't see coming. And she had a monster game. I got to say, Anna Lee was was my fave on the red side of things. For the Lady Bronx, who's who's happening, Mac? Who was it? Allison Bertram had a fantastic game with six points, tripling her average, and it's great to see for the Jackson future. As you know, they're going to have a lot of returning players next year. Just another year of experience, and so hopefully they'll use that experience to get their first W next season. Oh yeah. And now we got the senior nights, or senior day, Melanie Hero, first up. Well, I'll wrap it up real quick. My yeah. MVP, I'm gonna have to give it to Grayson Rosenberg. Playing pretty good unmatched defense, and I mean, defense might not win you games, it might not win you championships, but it will win you drives. <laughs> I'm going to do the cop. I was going to go Grayson, too, but I'm doing the cop out. I'm going to pick the triple senior, everybody, Melanie Hero and, and Grayson Rosenberg and Raina Rhodes. I'm going to go with all three, all three seniors, as you see. Hero is honored down at the court. Are we we're getting there, right? Yeah. All right. And that leaves just two more. Such a young team. We talk about it all that all last year I mean that's all we said this team's so young they were starting freshmen on the varsity out of necessity and they're still super young and I think Grayson will be next up and let's we have no urgency really to 
duck out for a commercial. We'll just stay right here. Senior night here in Jackson, of course, and the girls finish up this one on the wrong end of a 24-15 final. With the win, the Evanston Red Devils improve their overall record to three and 18. They go three and three in quadrant. That'll mean things. This game for the Evanston girls have some playoff implications. For the Jackson girls, there's nothing they could have done that would better themselves. They'll come in as the four seed in regionals, and they already know their opponent is the Cody Phillies. And we almost know the end result of that one, but we'll let it play out. Cody's really good. good. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we'd like to direct your attention to the court. Postseason, by the way, uh, pits the Southwest Quadrant playing the Northwest Quadrant to start. Well, once again, uh, there'll be a little bit of a delay before the boys start their game as we're doing these senior night festivities. Evanston boys team wants nothing to do with it. They're still in the locker room just getting their heads together. They care not to watch this stuff. We'll take a quick break, come back, and see if we can pick up Grayson Rosenberg and Rainer Rhodes after these. You're enjoying Bronx basketball on KZ95 and the Jackson Hole Radio Network. High Country Linen Service has grown with its state-of-the-art facility to be the premier rental service for linens, uniforms, and entry mats. High Country Linen also provides wholesale janitorial supplies, paper products, and earth-friendly cleaning supplies to Jackson Hole, Teton Valley, and beyond. Call 733-2638 or come see us at 355 North Glenwood on the web at highcountrylinen.com. Jackson Lumber, the board store, Jackson's oldest business and only true lumber yard in town. Jackson Lumber's hardware people are the best in the business and they do it right the first time. Jackson Lumber works with people who make a living building. So the tools they sell are definitely the best hand tools and power tools available. With names like Vest Tool, Milwaukee, Makita, Skillsaw, Senko, Fine, and DeWalt. Jackson Lumber, the board store at 130 South Grovant. Call 733-6000, 733-6000. One of my faves, Raina Rhodes, she's always going to give you everything. She wears her heart on her sleeve. A lot of try out of Raina Rhodes. If somebody's down on the floor, I can guess that it's usually Raina. She's loose ball, scramble, kind of scrappy. And she's also a very smart basketball player. Great at knowing where to be at the right place at the right time. Great at cutting. Yeah, ready to shoot all the time, which I really like. She plays with confidence, and she doesn't care if she's missed her first 10 shots. She'll still keep shooting, and it's fantastic to watch. Yeah, I thought you were going to say smart like they were mentioning her GPA. She's just smart all around, off court and on. That brings us uh, to Grayson Rosenberg, who had a good game today, fouled out, and... Boy, she, without Grayson Rosenberg, this team would have really suffered this season. She's been consistent in the paint against teams, especially that feature some girls with length. For Rosenberg has played tough, played tall, and has been pretty important. Uh, it doesn't always show up with points with her, but shot blocking leads the team. and. She is a lot to deal with if you're an opponent trying to get inside on the Bronx. You got to deal with Grayson. Angel. All right. Angel will be attending the University of Syracuse. Well, she's going to my neck of the woods, upstate New York. Big orange. Yeah. Couldn't, couldn't catch me going to New York. 
Syracuse, that dome is the first place I, I saw my first concert. It was like Sticks or Journey or something like that wow. in, the, in the Syracuse Dome. Yeah, I'm telling you, I had no idea I was living large back then. <laughs> Syracuse, she'll enjoy that. Um, she'll never see the sun. It's uh, cloudy every day there. Yep. <laughs> she'll see some snow, but have fun in Syracuse, Angel. And now we get to the boys' side of things, Seb Brunner. He's not the last Brunner. He wasn't the first Brunner. But that's all we're going to see of him on this floor. Seb, multi-sport guy. Hey, Liam's our football guy. Liam, did you see the the breakout? I, I call it a breakout season Seb had at, at wideout. I mean, that guy caught everything you threw to him and then saw him. Yeah, I mean, Seb Runner definitely like probably the best receiver on the team. He definitely had like a, a lot of receiving yards. Super I think it was athletic. like a 1,500. Yeah, it was insane numbers that led all the 3A in football for most of the year, if not at the end of the year. And he, and he did it. I mean, he's not a huge tall target, but he out jumps everybody. He out fights for the ball. Every 50 50 ball thrown at Seb, he's coming down with it. It's, what a year he had receiving. Yeah, I mean, I'm very critical of former football coach David White. He, he wasted my <laughs> sophomore career and uh, definitely made football no longer fun for me. But, I mean, he would just huck it up to Seb, and Seb always came down with it. The guy hucking it up to Seb last year was the guy standing right next to him, honored right behind him, Harrison Ward, the transfer quarterback. Those two combined on the gridiron for a lot of highlights. A.J. Fowler. That's A.J.'s sister is more emotional than A.J. Is. Ari is weeping as A.J. He's considering a yeah, we got to say goodbye to these guys. And Mason Borchardt didn't see enough of him either. That's just his last senior season. Played with him on the JV when I was a junior. Yeah. When he was a sophomore, and he's always been such a spark, just playing his game. And I love how he plays his game. Yeah, definitely a very uh, unmatched threat at the Miller Parks during the summer. Yes. Oh, yeah? Yes, yeah. absolutely. I had no idea. I remember this one time where uh, my buddy Owen, like it was kind of just like winding down. There wasn't really people, and Mason just kept dunking on him, and it was really funny. Forster, <laughs> <laughs> lighten it up. Gavin Keelan also, he's part of that core four, I'll call them. They've been playing varsity minutes on the basketball court. There seems like their whole career, Keelan, Hannah, Brunner, and Fowler. And it all comes to a close after this game. It seems too soon. Gavin Keelan been a key part of it. It's hard to believe, especially playing with them for the last, I guess, three, two or three years, except this year, of course. Gavin Keelan. Yeah, Gavin. Our next senior is Owen Oh, and Kata, another multi-sport guy, pretty good on the football field. He's considering Georgetown University Ooh, Georgetown. I don't know if he's Alan gonna crack the, I don't know if he'll crack the starting lineup in Georgetown. <laughs> yeah, I, we talk about some basketball history. Yeah, Patrick Ewing as well, another great. Yeah, Alan Iverson is better. And lose one to the greatest team ever, the Philadelphia Eagles, led by backup quarterback Nick Foles, who won Super Bowl MVP against Tom Brady. Liam, I thought I fired you like 15 minutes ago. I've got nothing left to lose. <laughs> yeah, Connie's got a little fan club. Glue guy. He totally is a glue guy, isn't he? Yes, That's he is. pretty, pretty perk. 
Harris, Jason oh. Bird, Bill Wiley, Jason Huggins. Mac, you were here a year Josh ago. Shockley. What was it like playing your last game? That was a very fun game. Yeah. Um, for some reason, as a basketball player, I always struggled at home to play oh. on the home court. That was the only game I scored at home. Oh. No kidding. Yes. Goodness. Saved it till senior. Yeah. Had a four point play in that corner. Wow. Yeah, when, when I played basketball in eighth grade, I was more or less like the get three fouls in the first quarter and like deck people when you're shooting. <laughs> yes. Well, we'll be watching you leave here soon enough, Liam. It'll come quick. Andrew, yeah. Hannah. Still got to pick a sport to play. Yeah, yeah. Think about, think about golf. Okay. You got your whole life to play golf. Wait till you're old. I'm already really bad at it, but you how, know. How, how is your cussing? Because uh, you're going to need that for golf. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm pretty good at that. Pretty good at that? All right. No, you'll be fine. Yeah, you should see my driver. I top the ball every time. Oh. Andrew Hanna, all-state guy. And looks like he got all the vert in the family. Taller than everybody. Yes. Even dead. And the crowd favorite, Ty Van Zanten. He's considering Utah State University, the University All right, Ty. Well, we'll forgive you for the Utah State. <laughs> What's wrong with you, Doug? Well, his parents went to Utah State. Oh, okay. You'd be... Four years of basketball, two years of track, and two years of football. He'd like to thank his parents and siblings for always being there for him. He'd like to thank coaches Elliot, Silver, and Harris. Crowd starting to fill in here on senior night for Jackson. We're just a few minutes away from getting this boys game started. Ty Van Zandt will round it out for the senior basketball players, girls and boys. Thank you for representing your staff, your community, and your family with pride. We would like to thank you for all you have done for our school, our basketball program, and wish you well in your future endeavors. Congratulations. Yeah, pretty, pretty normal, but I think by the time they get to the varsity game, we'll all get collectively together, but they are gonna graduate. Pretty core group. It's gonna be tough to rebound with some underclassmen as both these teams out to take some warm-ups and we wrap up senior night. We'll be right back to set the scene for the boys. This is a big game with big playoff implications. Coming back at you with the start of this one. Boys coming up next on yeah. KZ95 and the Jackson Hole Radio Network. One good play can improve a team's chance of winning the game. And when executed properly over and over again, that play can take a team far. One good decision when you get behind the wheel can do the same. Approximately half of the people who lose their lives on Wyoming roads each year were not wearing a seatbelt. Stay in the game, Wyoming. Buckle up every time you get in your vehicle. It's a winning play. This message brought to you by YDOT. Jackson Lumber, the board store. Jackson's oldest business and only true lumber yard in town. Jackson Lumber's hardware people are the best in the business, and they do it right the first time. Jackson Lumber works with people who make a living building, so the tools they sell are definitely the best hand tools, and power tools available with names like Vest Tool, Milwaukee, Makita, Skillsaw, Senko, Fine, and DeWalt. Jackson Lumber, the board store at 130 South Grovant. Call 733-6000, 733-6000. Courtside, both teams in their warm-ups, and it's boys on boys this time, and Coach Matt Elliott, his crew, up against the Evanston Red Devils, and Coach Rob Watsabaugh, former Jackson resident, now in his fourth year at the helm in Evanston of this game with playoff implications. These two teams come in, seeded two and three currently. Evanston with a three and two quadrant record. Jackson two and three, but we can flip the script in one game and earn the number two seed with a win for the Bronx if they can pull it off. What it might mean 
We'll talk about in a second, but a reminder that the action this afternoon is always brought to you by Young Life at Jackson Hall, where they're all about teenagers. Jackson Lumber, Jackson's original board store, the McPeak Group, Jackson Hall's premier real estate team at Sotheby's International Realty. The town square ends of Jackson Hall includes the Antler Inn, Elk Country and Cowboy Village Resort and 49er Inn and Suites. Big old tires, a reputation you can ride on to the Target Plaza and Great Northern Coffee, their old world style makes all the difference. For Jackson Hole Radio, I'm Jake Nichols, Mac Fairborn here. Liam McPeak and Kimmy K. And this is gonna be a big game, but I'm gonna say not big because of playoffs, Mac. And I'll tell you why I say this. Two, three, C seed, uh, three seed doesn't really matter. They are so packed tight in the Northwest Quadrant. I mean, yeah, maybe you don't want, there's particular reasons you don't want Cody. There might be particular reasons why you want uh, uh, Rock Springs, but it's it's a pick em over there. Whether you come into this regionals as the two or three seed out of the Southwest, I don't know it matters all that much when you get to the postseason. It's tight over there in the Northwest. Yes, very true. And just watching film, I would rather Jackson, I think, match up better against Rock Springs. So if it depends on how Rock Springs does today. I think, I believe they play Kelly Walsh. I don't know that for sure. I can't confirm, but it also depends on how Rock Springs finishes because they're so close that whoever wins the games today decides the seeding so that's how close it is yeah and it's going to be very interesting um yes this will be the second year in a row if jackson wins tonight that they would be the number two seed they're the number two seed last year and with a very similar record as jackson i think was 11 and 9 at this point last season and now they're 10 and 10 this year and so i think this is going to be a very fun game lots of lots on the line as andrew hannah's just a stone's throw away from the thousand point club and now jackson will also if they win will have a winning record in the regular season something that is always fun to see yeah uh i mean if you're gonna leave anything out in the court it's got to be this game For the last time you're gonna play at home last time you're gonna play in front of your 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 student section last time you're gonna play on this hardwood so, I mean, you got to leave it out on the court. Now, I can't remember if we mentioned this on the air now, but as Mac Fairbairn points out, yeah, 11 points away from a 1,000 club for Hannah. So when he hits that mark, we'll try to make sure we make note of it. But other than postseason, which, yeah, I mean, it's important to see, but you got to take care of business in Green River anyway. I think more important are a couple other things to look at. One, payback. Anytime you play a team twice in a season, you can't let them sweep that season series. You got to split it. They got you on their court. All right, now you got to get them here. The biggest reason, though, senior night and the emotion, but the undefeated home record. Ah, that's my biggest. Yes. You got to defend home court and take care of biz tonight. Yes, absolutely. I actually don't have the staff for this, but I don't know if there's ever been a time that Jackson's been undefeated at home. I mean, a lot of motivation, a lot of reasons to win this game if you're Jackson. Postseason, defend home court, uh, get payback Evanston for the loss down at Uinta County. You pick it. If you can't get motivated for this one, there's something wrong. A lot of emotion running senior night as well. Some of these seniors, uh, all these seniors, not going to play on this floor again. So... A lot going on. We'll talk about harnessing the emotions with Coach Elliott. That was a big thing. I asked Coach, hey, do you let these guys just run wild with their emotion? They're at home, the crowd, as seniors. Like, do you, do you go ahead and say, yeah, use that emotion and play with it? Or do you tell them, hey, you got to chill out, try to tone that down a little. Here's what Coach Elliott had to say about the emotion aspect. Well, I don't think you can duck it. Um, that's the one thing. I think if you try to hide it and dust it under the rug, um, you're just avoiding the inevitable. There is going to be emotions involved. And I think at that point, we've talked about it a lot going into it this week, um, how you're going to have, you are going to be emotionally invested in the senior night, which will take place before the boys game. But you also have to have the mindset when that's over to be composed and mature enough to say, all right, now I'm between these lines and, and I got to go do my job. So we have an opportunity to win. So we haven't ducked it at all, you know, talked a lot about it, but we also don't want them to, 
uh, hold their emotions in. You know, this is a this is a big night for them. They put a lot of time in. You know, so we want to definitely honor these seniors and then have an t- opportunity after that for them to go out with a victory and hopefully an undefeated home season. Jackson Bronx come into this one with a record of 10 and 10 overall, two and three in quadrant, ranked number eighth in the 4A off of one game losing streaks. Red Devils, they're 11 and 10 overall, three and two in quadrant, ranked number 10. They're also coming off a loss of Star Valley in a one that really stung for them. They led that game for um, three quarters and then Star Valley got them on the fourth. So they're smarting a little bit from that game and uh, we'll see if they come with a chip on their shoulder but for jackson bronx uh, one thing i told you mac i was gonna like wow you with the stat that nobody knows jackson defense has been better and better all year we watched the bronx defense get better and better as the year progressed which coaches love that coaches for defense it tells them there's a buy-in from the players that they're picking up what you're putting down they're giving you the effort that's usually what defense is the litmus test on uh, a team playing for you but the numbers didn't indicate to me how good I thought the Jackson defense has been. They surrender 55.4 points a game. That's ranked number 11. That's not near the top, that's near the bottom. But the numbers that do jump out is the steals. Jackson does not steal the ball from other teams. They're the worst in stealing. So Seb and all those guys, they're not stealing the ball from you and they're giving up points. So where is the defense? Lowest field goal percentage shooting by an opponent against Jackson. Every to every team that plays Jackson shoots at their worst of the season when they play Jackson. It tells me they're contending shots. Yeah, I mean, yes. I feel like some of that has come from like when you're going inside and you just have to face Andrew Hanna, oh, like yeah. Mason Borchart, Gavin Keelan, and like you see it a lot. Gavin Keelan will just send it right back. Along with, yeah. I feel like in close games, when you have the student section behind you, some of the things they say can be harsh, and uh, they don't really regulate that. <laughs> so That could be a play of factor. But, yeah, Jackson can test shots. Um, I, I was surprised. Yeah, the, the, the opponent shooting from the field was like it wasn't even close. When you play Jackson, you don't shoot your best. Uh, that that held true for everybody. Let's let the boys introduce themselves, and we'll get this one started. Starting lineups brought to you by our friends at Young Life of Jackson Hall. Seth Runner, senior. Harris Award, senior. Dan Baltus, junior. AJ Fowler, senior. Owen Connors, senior. Aaron Larson, junior. Andrew Hanna, senior. Jack Perze, junior. Mason Porter, senior. Gavin Keelan, senior. Okay, senior. Jesse Larson, junior. Paul Wetzel, junior. Connor Scott, sophomore. to be ruled by emotion. The Evanston Red Devils, a very emotional team. They play hot and cold. They can get shooting streaky. They can also fall into funks, but they play uh, all heart. Um, they're a very emotional team. Jackson, that isn't their MO necessarily, but they're playing uh, their final home game for some seniors here on senior night. So I expect emotions to be running high for both sides. Absolutely. I mean, I remember Evanston's senior night last year, and they totally played their hearts.
ready to go here in Jackson on senior night. Keys to the game for the boys, I think. I want to see them spread the ball around. I want four guys in double digits. Hard to defend when you don't know where the shots are coming from. Purposeful ball movement. That loss against Green River uh, last Saturday, I didn't see the ball getting moved around much on offense, at least not with purpose. So it, yeah, I want to see that ball get moved. And then channel your emotion, Jackson Box. It's okay to play with emotion, but you gotta play with emotion. Don't let it be your enemy. Starting lineups beginning with our visiting Red Devils in their road reds. Evanston is Evanston's got a couple of post players who can kind of play big with us. Two six four guys in Kai Barker and Riker Lind. They can also hit from distance when they get hot. Drew Barker, Clayton Cook, the 6'1 junior, they can hit shots. Now they don't have any one guy that you gotta shut down. They they get it from everywhere. Harrison Ward will get the start as the senior for Jackson, along with Seb Brunner. AJ Fowler is Coach Elliott will put out all seniors. I mean, there's only really one senior, that, or one non-senior that even plays. It's number 22, Jack Berze. Yeah, it's hard to believe the Jackson Bronx have eight seniors. That's a majority of their team that aren't going to be returning next year. Oh, it's going to be tough. Graduating a lot, so kind of a mixed bag for Coach Elliott. That's right. Uh, Ward is, I thought Ward was starting, he's not, it's... He's just, you know, oh, they're just announcing, oh, okay, all right. I'm, 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 I'm late to the party on this one, okay. Can we announce the starting lineup, please? Not necessarily all the seniors. We just did that. <laughs> all right, it'll be the usual starting five for Jackson. That's Brunner, Keelan, Hannah, Fowler, and Borchert. And they'll tap with Evanston's usual top five, although 24, Brand oh, Braden Wallace is a surprise to me. He's not normally a starter. He's out there with Kai Barker. Riker Lind, Drew Barker, and Clayton Cook in the backcourt. Jump ball, Borcher wins it. Jackson starts off with the basketball. And here we go. Just underway on senior night in Jackson. The Bronx have not lost on their home court. Andrew and that's two. As you know, Andrew Hanna, 11 points away from 1,000. And that's two, just nine left on that clock. And Braden Wallace works at top of the key to Barker. Now baseline drive, Lynn, no good, but the putback, Clayton Cook. And nobody was there, or Robinette, or no, that was Cook, sorry. Yeah, that's nobody what, there. That's what Cook does best. Yeah, that shot no good, and Evanston coming the other way now with a chance to take their first lead. 2-2 two, two just underway as Kai Barker, or Jay Hill pulls up. Jay with it to Kai Barker. Kai taking a look with Borchard on him. And here's Clayton Cook. Cook being watched by Hannah. A lot of movement off ball for Evanston. As they try to shake loose of the man defense. Good left-handed layer in the lane, but it won't go. Kai Barker stays with it, though, and swats it back out to Cook. Cook will fix his sneaker. He's got it untied. And there's Lind, Lind, top of the key. Barker, that's Kai, at Hill, Jay Hill. Back to Wallace, Braden Wallace drives left block. Kick out, Lind for three, no good. Rebound Fowler, or Seb rather, Seb almost lost it off his fingertips. Now Borcher with a judge shot, that's good. And Borcher makes it 4-2. He makes it look so easy. Jay Hill with it to Lynn Farside. Gavin Keelan on him. Both these teams will probably be manning up on defense. Neither plays a ton of zone. Here's Kai Barker. Kick out Cook. Thought about it, but won't take it with Hannah. 
coming out to greet him. There's a drive in the lane, no good by Wallace, but the putback, and that's Kai Barker. Too many offensive boards already. Cook and Barker both with the putbacks. Hannah in the pivot. Distributes to AJ, back to Andrew Hanna. He's in deep, can he do it? No, he cannot. Clayton Cook contested the shot. Andrew was practically under the basket. Was under the ball, under the board. Loose ball, oh, Wallace picks up the change. Wallace puts AJ in the air, up and in. Braden Wallace makes it 6-4. He got AJ off his feet. Seb Brunner, he drives the right block, picks up a triple team, kick out. Keelan rattles it and out, no good. Panel with the save, behind the back pass to Keelan. Keelan drives the lane and now settle things down. That got a little fun for a minute. Seb Brunner tries to get away from Hill. Puts up the shot. Good! Seb Brunner makes it 7 to 6. Looks like Seb Brunner said something to. Uh, take a look at that. To Riker, and I mean. See that a lot out of him. He's a very big, talkative person. Yes, he is. Seb nails the three to put Jackson up 7-6. And yeah, Seb's always going to let you know how he's feeling about it. Especially if you're the guy covering him. You're the first line of fire. Just under five to go. Jackson up one here at home. They have not lost this season on this court. Here's Lynn with a baseline drive. Oh, that was pretty. Wow. And so far, Evanston getting all their looks inside, and Jackson needs to step up the interior defense as they have the size. Definitely. Hannah with a turnaround shot, no good. The rebound goes to Cook. Andrew with a miss down low, and it gives Evanston a chance to add to the one-point lead. Out of bounds. That's off of Jackson. Seth trying to get the call changed. Meanwhile, we get wholesale changes. On the Red Crew side of things, our first look at Cohen Morrow, our first look at Jordan Mendez. Jackson's got to watch out for Cohen Morrow, who's ready to take charges. Yeah, Morrow, very physical guy, plays basketball like football. As a long three there from Drew Barker is no good. Rebound, Seb. Down to 4 10. Seb folds one to Hannah, one touch pass to Borchert. Borchard drives baseline, puts it up, no good. Good job by Riker Lynn to stay with him every step of the way. Jackson not getting real good looks, not as good as Evanston. Evanston's getting a lot of shots down low, wide open. Here's Clayton Cook, wants Morrow to set that block for him, and now we'll work off that. Bounce pass to Cohen Morrow. His shot no good, he travels. And into the game comes Jack Thursday, maybe to help load up inside to kind of stop those points. Morrow, by the way, has recently committed to play football at the next level. I forget where he's going, Mac Mike. Hill State, I okay. believe. Cool. Yeah, that's his sport for sure. Seb Brunner with it now. Jackson down eight, seven. Nowhere they haven't been before. I remember one 6-0-7-0 run to start a game here, and they came back. There's a little no look behind the back pass. Down, and Keelan with a three. Jackson back up, 10-8, back and forth we go. This is going to be close to the wire. I can't see anybody running away in this one. Cohen Morrow with Berizé on him. That's a good football matchup. It's Clayton Cook down low in the post. Puts up the left shot, no good. Hannah was right with him. And a foul on the rebound, and Mac, you call that. It's Morrow, he's very aggressive. And he picks up his first. Sorry, it's not, it's Cook. Clayton Cook, a guy they need a lot more of than Morrow. Gavin Keela with it to Andrew Hannah. Jackson up two with a chance to add. Seb Brunner with a long three. Seb Brunner got a friendly roll. 13-8, Jackson. Jackson doing a good job spreading the scoring around so far. We talked about it. I like it. Cook, far side. Mendez, Jordan. He can be quick to the rim. His pass almost stolen away by Seb Brunner, but recovered by Drew Barker. Hands off to Morrow. Now back out top. Riker Lind with it. Gavin Keelan on him. This will be a good matchup if it goes on all day. 
jab, and Keelan denies Lynn the good luck. And he missed the layup. Jackson ball, Seb Brunner swings one here to Berezay in the near elbow, hands off to Brunner. Seb's got an open shot, he'll take it. And no good, Morrow came out just at the last second to challenge that, that was open for a minute. Two minutes to go, Jackson up five, Red Devils ball. Riker Lind with it, Gavin Keelan on him. Lind is probably their most all-around swing dangerous guy, and Gavin Keelan's our swing that. It's a good one-on-one -on -one matchup. Clayton Cook, hand on him, that's another good one. Marquee man-on-man -man match. Mendez, bounce pass into Morrow, bounce pass alongside the baseline, no good. Keelan again was right in Lynn's hip pocket. Borchert, top of the key to Brunner, takes a long look, tucks the ball under his arm, now behind his back, look to Coach Elliott, see what they want to do here. Hannah, inside to Mason Borchert, spin move, shot, no good, and the rebound goes to Morrow. Borchert had a good look, couldn't get it to go. Yeah, and the whole Jackson Brox team is, is just getting good looks, and some of them are going in, some of them just aren't. Cohen Morrow, real physical on Berese, can't get it, and Jack with the rebound. Berese playing D, playing the glass. Under a minute to go in the first. Jack Berese with it now, back to Gavin Keelan. Put Riker Lind in the air, now drives right block. Cohen Morrow is down. Yeah, that's, I, I really don't agree with that call. I think Morrow he just sold that. Set. Yeah, he just sold that. I agree. And Morrow not only didn't seem set, he went down awful easy for a middle linebacker. I think you're right. 45 seconds, I think he bought one. Lind will check out for the Red Devils momentarily as we're down to the last 40 ticks. Still stuck at 13-8. As Jay Hill works it to Mendez, far side. Portrait on him. Morrow to Drew Barker. Drew. Bounce pass, looking inside, never got there. He wanted Barker, but it was stolen away. Here comes Jackson. Mason Borcher, baseline, twisting, turning, shot, no good. Rebound Morrow, bodies go flying, and it's going to be Mason Borcher with a reach in. Tough. Another guy, every time Morrow's around the ball and there's a whistle, it's not on him. It's on the guy next to him. 20 sec, uh, 20 .6 seconds. Evanston, see if they play for a last shot. They're down five, nobody scored in a while. Jay Hill works it to Drew Barker. He's their three ball guy occasionally when he's hot. They got any of three that can shoot from distance when they're feeling it. Cohen Morrow, bounce pass inside, almost got away from Barker. His shot, no good, and that's how the quarter will end. Now that quarter had a little bit of everything in those eight minutes. After the first, it's Jackson 13, Evanston 8. We'll be right back with more on KZ95 of the Jackson Hole Radio Network. Experience Jackson Hole like a local while staying at the Antler Inn, Elk Country Inn, Cowboy Village Resort, or 49er Inn and in Suites. With the best entertainment, dining, shopping, bars, and brews all in walking distance, you'll never want to leave. Call 1-800-4-TETONS or find them on the web at townsquareins.com. Let's get back to the live action on KZ95. Here's Jake Nichols. I've bungeed my uh, bench cam in so tight I can't <laughs> even twist it over there. As Coach Elliott goes over things here after the break, one quarter in the books, and so far so good for Jackson. Not their best quarter, not their worst. Yes, that was a very quick quarter. I feel like it went by really quickly. Yeah, yeah. It did feel really fast. Well, I think we're just like not really used to fast quarters considering the girls' game was just jump ball, jump ball, foul, jump ball, <laughs> jump ball. Comparatively, yes, we have hit lightning speed really quick. Fresh eight on the board, Evanston ball moving right to left on their road reds. Jackson, their home black, home white, trimmed in black and orange. Jay Hill directs traffic, it's Wallace to come out with him. There's Wallace with it now. Braden triggers to Lynn, back to Wallace. Wallace bounce pass inside to Cook. 
Now Wallace and Braden Wallace has come out of nowhere. But I didn't see him. I don't know if he played at all at Star Valley. Surprising me. Set runner lost the handle. He wanted to call inside. Here's Braden Wallace, meanwhile, for the Red Devils. One shot here. It ties it as Cook thought about a step back three. Won't do it. Braden Wallace, top of the key. Lynn, Riker Lynn moving on. Keelan. Now kick out, top of the key to Hill. Hill, far side Lind, right in front of the black hole. Riker Lynn, bounce pass inside to Barker. Barker tries to back up his man, Berezo, to the rack. Long three from Cook, tries to follow up the rebound, but Keelan's already got it. Seb ahead for AJ, baseline. That's his spot, but it was contested a little bit by Wallace. Now AJ's gonna try it, too short. Rebound pulled down by Clayton Cook. Suddenly scoring has become difficult for both teams. Jay Hill with it. Hill, Seb Brunner on him, gets it top of the key. To Barker inside to Cook. Cook working on Hannah, shoulders him, now turns around. Right-handed hook shot, no good. Hannah, good defense with a rebound as well. And to Seb, now to Jack Berizé. Berizé cross court, AJ, he'll try a long three. Oh my goodness, that rattled in and out, no good. Keelan, as Jackson doing a good job on the offensive boards, will get another try here. Bronx still have not scored two minutes into the second. Seb took 100 steps and gets that shot to go. Seb Warner, all kinds of out of control, all kinds of footwork. Jay Hill going the other way. That shot no good. Seb Brunner with a rebound. Jackson up four. They have it. Behind the back pass to Berese. Open in! Jack Berese! You don't see that out of him, but when you do, it's certainly a treat. Jack did a great job, sensed the pressure, waited for it to go by, and put the shot up and in. We got it on replay. I'm pretty sure we'll get that for you, Jack. Lind has an open look three. That's no good. And the trio of Bronx there for the rebound. It's Brunner. Seb with it working on Hill. Jackson up six. Seb posts up 15 footer. Good. Seb's already got 10. That leads all Bronx scores with 10. Brunner feeling it tonight. Why not? It's senior night. Jay Hill, far side, Wallace, Braden Wallace, bounce pass into Cook. Cook with Hannah on him, and again, he's going to try to back Andrew up to the hole. Andrew Hannah got a lot of ball there, but they're going to call him on the foul. That's Hannah's first. Crowd does not like it. Neither does Matt Elliott. And to the line is Cook, who is a 50% free throw shooter. Looked, it definitely was all ball. Now what happened under the ball could have been elbow on elbow. Let's take a look at that. There is a replay, by the way. That was pretty fun. Jack, there is a wait. Whoop, there goes the traffic, and Jack puts it up and in. Easy as can be. 19-13 as both shots from the line converted. Jackson ball up six. With 4.50 to go in the second. Seb Brunner gets a screen from Berese, but slipping right around it was Drew Brunker. There's inside to Hannah. Reverse layup up and down. Seven points remain. The other way, it's Riker Lind. Who is that that came from behind to block that? Looks like Andrew Hanna once again, and so. AJ's coming up lame on the right leg. He's got to come out right ankle causing him some trouble, and they'll go get him. So it's Borchard, Hannah, Brunner, Keelan, and Berezay on the floor for Jackson. Wallace triggers into Drew Barker. Drew walks into the paint, kick out, wide open, Cook, and he didn't want the shot. I'm surprised Clayton, but he knows Hannah is ready to come out there. Still, now Cook is going to take it and can't get it to go. Maybe that's why. Set Brunner over the back of... I can't believe Seb didn't get called there, and definitely Coach Watson Ball wanted it. Morrow has already drawn two, and Cohen Morrow gets up saying, hey, wasn't that the third? And maybe, maybe a makeup call. Seb definitely climbed the back of Cohen Morrow. 
Watson ball is like, what do you got to do to get a foul here? Keelan with it now for Jackson. Just over four to go. Jackson up seven. 21-13. I guess that's eight. My math is bad. Keelan, Gavin Keelan. Is that three? It is. Keelan with six now. And the Bronx with their biggest lead of the afternoon. Top of the key, Cohen Morrow. There is a on him. Morrow trying to get it inside, never got there. Andrew Hanna stole it away. Now Hanna bumps hard with Morrow. And again, Cohen Morrow's like, where is the call? Coach Watson chewing on the referee, no call. And Hanna has got six. Time out. Coach Watson, that might just be to talk to the Zebras. Oh boy! Did you get that one on replay? I did that. Yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't tell if his feet were moving or not, but they kind of looked set. Yes. But I feel like he had just gotten set when he kind of went in the lane. It was close. I mean, it was your typical 50-50 block charge call. Could go either way. But when it's Moro, he gets so many of them that it's rare to see him not get one. And that was two in that sequence where, boy, one of them, runner got away. But anyway, yeah, it, it all evens out. You let him play or you don't let him play. You call or you call it. We'll yeah. figure it all out. Along with that, Andrew Hanna's halfway there to his 11 points with six. Once again, Andrew Hanna, the countdown to a 1,000-point club. He's got six. He needs five more. Evanston with the ball, 26-13 lead. In the backcourt to Drew Barker. Sub runner will challenge him. Drew, bounce pass into Cohen Morrow. Morrow to Clayton Cook. Cook right now is cold, and that's a good thing for Jackson. As he can be dangerous. Drew Barker with an impossible move inside, and now gets his own rebound. Oh, boy. And Drew trying to take over the show for the Red Devils. Morrow triggers to Mendez. He drives the lane. That shot no good, but Cook with a rebound. And Jack Perizet got a hand on it to Borcher. Seb's pass. That almost got away. And now Keelan is bumped by Morrow. And there's the call. I think there's the call. Boy, it could have been any of three calls, but they finally whistle Morrow. And the visiting Red Devil crowd does not like that one either. The pitchforks are out. Cohen Morrow will come off for a moment. And this is, yeah, this is looking like the girls' game. The ball is just going everywhere, and everything's getting sped up. 2.45 to go. Jackson up by 13, 26-13. Gavin Keelan hands it to Jack Bears. The Bronx have to take advantage of a Red Devil team now that is ice cold from the field. Andrew Hanna backs into the right block, gives it to Berizé. Berizé bounce pass to Hanna. That was not an, an advised pass. As neither guy was open, really. And now the turnover. Here's Mendez. Jordan, the 5'10 junior with it, pulls up. His pass intended for Drew Barker, but it was his brother, Kai, who got a hand on it. Ball's well. Here's Mendez. Mendez drives the paint kick out to Drew Barker. Drew gets a screen. He drives the right block. His shot up and in. He got away from Jack Berizé and good speed there by Drew Barker. 26-15 as he got to the rim quickly. Seb Runner posts up with a three. That didn't look good out of his hand. Hannah with the rebound though. Shot no good. That's off Berizé. No, they're going to say off Lind and, or Barker rather. And I can't believe it. Yeah, Bar Barker just seemed to be in front of that ball when he pushed it out of bounds. All right. Well, I'm trying to feel for the visitors who's got to think they cannot get a call. Here's Hannah on a double team, and the shot no good, but he does draw the foul, and that could be on Barker or Cook. It's going to be Barker. Kai, the 6'4 senior with his first foul, team second in the act of shooting, so Hannah will go to the line, and we all know the story there. He's not, he's not gotten to a thousand this way. <laughs> yes, and if Hannah could keep getting Barker and Cook to draw fouls, then that's really gonna give him such a big advantage if one of them has to be subbed out as yeah. he'll just have the paint to himself. Yeah, yeah. like Hacka Andrew. 
Andrew misses both. Evans step with the rebound. Here come the Red Devils. Mendez with it now. Jordan far side. Cook. Cook in that right pivot and that right elbow. One touch pass from Barker out to Lind, out to Cook. He's open, but Cook not feeling it. Just will not take that shot. I don't know if he's worried about Hannah coming out or the fact that he can't bury one. There's Drew Barker with a drive, and he tried to get Mendez in the corner, and that got tipped by a Bronk. Willie Evanston ball. So with Cook not nailing him, I don't know who on the Evan. Coach Watsabaugh's got to be thinking also, who is my scorer here? Who's going to, who can I count on? Here's Lynn, maybe him. Riker gets Keelan in the air. He'll try the long three. No good. Battle for the rebound. Kai Barker wins it. Gets it far side of Mendez. And we'll try again if you're the Red Devils. Here's Mendez drive. And that's partially blocked by Borcher. Good defense by Jackson. Just don't give you a look. Seb with it now, we're under a minute. And Seb on the way to the rim gets fouled with a block. It's on Drew Barker, his first team third. Neither team close to the bonus as we're down to 49 ticks. Borchard into Seb Brunner, watched by Barker. Near side, Beresay, he's open. Jack, take that shot if you got it. Jack back out to Seb. Seb peaks at the clock, under 40. Jackson may be playing for a last shot here. Seb nope. Brunner will fire and gets it. That's a two, and it's 28-15. Seb had a good look and a good screen from Hannah, I think. Mendez bounce pass to Cook. Clayton Cook looks around, and Evanston needs to do more than play for last shots. They need a lot of shots. Jordan Mendez tries to get away from Borcher, gives it. Over to Drew Barker. Barker with Seb on him, drives the lane. Shot no good. I didn't see any contact with yeah. the whistle. Boy, if that happened, it was all below the waist. Mm. Well, I won't say anything because Evanston doesn't think they've gotten a call since they left the bus. Eight seconds, 28-15. It's gone all Jackson's way here in the second. Funny things happen at halftime, though. So. Don't count your chickens yet. Barker misses the first. The back end coming for Drew Barker, a 50% free throw shooter. And he gets that one. 28-16. Jackson can play for the last shot now with eight seconds. As Brunner will inbounds here, full court pressure here by Evanston trying to create a turnover. Good job by Fowler to come out of bounds for that pass. Here's Borcher to set Brunner baseline. They got to get something up here. And Hannah can't get it. And at the half, Jackson 28, Evanston 16. We'll be right back to halftime show. I'm KZ95 of the Jackson Hole Radio Network. He runs across, goes to the red part of the section. Uh, black team has it, white team is not playing people down like they did before. Oh, it looks like they're, uh, they're lining up to do something. And shoots, and boom goes down. Oh, he's gonna get more than one shot. Oh, shooting again. The dynamite does not go boom that time. Play by play is hard. Uh, so is Jackson Hole Real Estate. Get a pro. McPeak Group proudly supporting the Bronx on their march toward a state championship. High Country Linen Service has grown with its state of the art facility to be the premier rental service for linens, uniforms, and entry mats. High Country Linen also provides wholesale janitorial supplies, paper products, and earth-friendly cleaning supplies to Jackson Hole, Teton Valley, and beyond. Call 733-2638 or come see us at 355 North Glenwood on the web at highcountrylinen.com. Back here at courtside at Jackson halftime and Jackson Bronx lead this one 28-16. It's going well for the Bronx. 
just uh, I just will note this because I forgot to mention I know Evanston, I know the team, Coach Watts, I know the players, I know the radio crew. They all recognize that this is not the same Jackson Bronx team that went down there and you went a county a month ago and laid an egg and. They know this is a much better Jackson team, but they're getting their first real taste of how better, how much the Jackson Bronx have been proved since these two teams saw each other last. Pretty good game so far. Jackson doing everything they want to or room for improvement? I would say, you know, Evanston's a fantastic hustle team and they've gotten plenty of offensive rebounds that they earned, rightfully so but Jackson's got to eliminate that and they got to get every single rebound and just eliminate Evanston from getting any second chance points. And Jackson themselves has been also doing a great job with the offensive glass and getting putbacks and getting good shots inside. Set Brunner with a fantastic first half, one of the best halves I've ever seen from him because he's taking the right shots, not throwing up questionable 30 footers, but taking the right shots, getting great looks. Yeah, I think that usually you have Mason Borchardt either kind of just consistently or he breaks out in one half. And, I mean, he's got two points so far. So, I yeah. mean, by, like, law of averages or whatever it is, he's, he might be due for a breakout. I, I don't want – yeah, I danger Evanston. Uh, maybe you don't know this, but, yeah, Borchardt's been way too quiet for the first 16 minutes. So, I, I can't imagine that continues. Hannah also uh, – he's been good, but I – We've seen more out of him, and you're, you're right about uh, Seb, Mac. It's not those forced shots that we've seen sometimes. He's just taking the game as it comes to him right now and really looking like a senior leader. These two teams very close in their season statistics, rebounding pretty close the edge to Jackson. It's kind of looked that way today. Right now, we told you Evanston's streaky shooting, and as bad as they've shot it this first half, they have only 16 points. They have not uh, hit their shots really at all, but they can be that good on the other end of things. So uh, something to watch for in the second half if this team comes out firing uh, you might want to have to slow them down. But right now, Jackson with a 28-16 lead, that's pretty good business. Last time these two teams met, 64-51. The game kind of got away late, but 13-point lead, 13-point win for Evanston last time. Both these teams coming off a loss, a real bitter one for the Evanston Red Devils, they thought they had Star Valley all kinds of beat in Afton and let that game get away. And for the Jackson Bronx, an emotional game against Star Valley. You got to get on the road early the next day and, and take on Green River in their place. Just tough, a little bit of a mental letdown. All the emotion, that looks like it's all out the window right now. Jackson's playing really well and spreading the scoring. I like that too. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think everyone in the stands wants to see Andrew Hanna get those five points. Does everyone in the stands know, I wonder? How I, many I know? I know some people know because yeah. I've heard about it in school. I don't think – I would doubt everyone knows. Okay. But some people are aware, yeah, Andrew Hanna is that close to a major milestone, 1,000-point club, and more importantly, the game – hanging in the balance we told you it's important for postseason it's uh it, it's not scoreboard watching it's win and you're in as far as the second seed we already know that no matter what any of the other teams do if jackson wins here they can flip and jump right up in the quadrant standing standings in the southwest go from three to two and evanston that quickly can drop from two to three it'll mean who you're playing in the northwest if we talked that I don't know. You want everyone and you don't want anyone. I don't know. I, there's nobody in the Northwest that sends a lot of shock of fear through me if I'm a Bronx fan. Yes. You I mean, should be able to handle any of them. Yes, because Jackson did sweep the Northwest for the first time since joining 4A. But Cody was a tough win. It was only a one-point victory in Cody. And Rock Spring, I mean, sorry, Riverton was also a tough win, but though you got to factor that both those games were road games. And so it's going to be a whole different atmosphere in Green River when you got very few fans cheering for you. And it will be very, very interesting. I think Jackson matches up the best against Rock Springs because that was their one of their yeah. better games here at home. And 
Got Rock Springs frustrated with him themselves. Cody just plays a slow pace, and yeah, they, I, they're not fun to play. Yeah, they stay in games. Um, not that anyone. every game's going to be fun. It's not a fun factor that gets you wins, but as a broadcast, yeah, just watch Cody just makes you play at their level, and it's it is not pretty to watch. Um, Jackson, if you joined us late, up 28-16. The game started close, back and forth, but like the Bronx have done a lot this season on this court, slowly exercising their will and just wearing down their opponent. Does it continue in the second half? It'll be interesting to see. One thing Jackson's doing well is spreading the wealth. We talked to Coach Elliott before the game about scoring and the fact that Jackson can really spread it around, and that's to their advantage. Yeah, that's the hard thing to defend us as well because you can scout us as much as you want, and then the next game someone else is going to step up. I think all four of those guys at some point this season have also had a 20-point game. Um, so as you said, that's what makes us so dangerous. We do rely on Seb to spread it out, you know, make sure he's distributing to the hot hand, making sure the ball's moving a lot. But yeah, um, we still think we're going to be one of the tougher outs in the state going forward. It doesn't even matter what our seed is. We'd like to be going into the regionals on a high note beating Evanston. But I think anyone on paper looks at us and if you get matched up with Jackson, you know, it, it, it could be a concern of yours. Yeah, and peaking, you know, we, we haven't talked about that a lot, but hitting March um, with momentum uh, is super good. Like Jackson, I can think of other teams that have impressive numbers, impressive records, but they're not rolling into regionals as hot as the Bronx. They're, they are peaking right now, playing really well. Yeah, seven out of eight victories in their last eight games. And even though, yes, the overall record doesn't, will scream through the roof um just yeah streaky streaky team right now is the jackson bronx and they just yeah if they win with against evanston that'll make eight out of nine which is very impressive with the winning record going into regionals which is also huge yeah definitely don't want to get on the uh losing streak side of things they lose this they'd be on a two-game losing streak they got their uh like seventh game seven game winning streak snapped by green river yeah and I mean, yeah, going in the regionals, you don't want to be kind of on a downtrend. Which makes this game so important, not just for seeding, but mostly for that momentum thing. If Evanston loses this, they hit the regionals uh, on a two-game losing skid, and Jackson wins. They're, they're feeling all of a sudden Green River is erased in their mind, and they're right back to where they want to be. I, You know, from the outside looking in, if I'm in the Northwest, I can't think of a coach up there in the Northwest and wants anything to do with the Jackson Bronx right now, the way they're playing. Senior night for Jackson and everything going their way so far, but Evanston not the kind of team that ever goes away. They'll keep coming as we get ready for the third quarter, and it's for Jackson, the starting five. A.J. Fowler, Andrew Hanna, Gavin Keelan, Seb Brunner, Mason Borchert for the Red Devils as well. We have not seen Luke Robinette, and all I can think is he is injured or somehow unavailable for this team. We would have seen Robinette by now. Averages five a game, the senior, uh, and it's been Braden Wallace who has kind of played instead of him, so I don't know where Robinette's at. Here's Riker Lynn with a long three. That's off the front of the iron. No good. Out of bounds. Jackson Paul. So, so far, so good. Red Devils, who can get hot and cold right now, have not been able to hit shots. It definitely from outside of 15 feet, they haven't. And it's also interesting because Riker Lynn shoots above 42% from the three-point line. Wow. Is that right? Yes, he's a sharp, sharp shooter. And he, so far, I think he's 0 for 3. Nothing going in for him. Clayton Cook, also one of their point leaders. He is the point leader with 10 on the season. 10 on average. Game has not also been really firing today at all. And Drew had a nice move. And then inside. there were three. And Andrew goes lefty for his eighth point of the game. Here's Wallace from three. That's too short. Rebound to Keelan. Right to Seb Runner. Jackson wants to play with pace here. Seb with a sneaky pass to Hannah. Hannah's pass hit by the rim. I don't know what Andrew's doing there. Let's go for the replay on that 
I think I got the replay on the Hannah. Le Hannah goes lefty, right? No, I don't. Just when I think I got it, here's uh, Brunner trying to trap Hill all by himself. It's called the one-man trap. The single-team trap. And it's Kai Barker with it now. Hands off to Wallace. Braden Wallace driving right block up and in. He got away from A.J. Fowler. Wallace having a game for Evanston out of nowhere. And it's 30-18. to 18. Seth Brunner with Jay Hill watching him. Into the pivot spot to Han, who kicks it out to A.J. Back to Brunner. He'll try an uncontested three. Good. You can't give Seb that good of a look. He'll take it. Yeah, I mean, you got to get out there and continue to chase Brunner. I know it's exhausting, but you just got to keep doing it. Seb, it never comes off the floor. And if it's a game of cardio, he's going to wear you down. Here's Riker Lynn. Thought about a shot. Puts Keel into the air, but won't take it. And he comes near side to the elbow to Jay Hill. Jay Hill gets a screen from Cook, puts up the shot, no good. Put back is in. Clayton Cook doing what Max says he does best, and that's the board in the bucket. For Cook, he leads. Oh, well, that's six for Cook. It's seven for Wallace on the Red Devil side of things. Runner wide open. AJ Fowler, the only guy who has not put one in the bucket and can't get it there either. Seb. Or Hannah, meanwhile, up and in. Andrew Hannah at 999 now. 999 points for 21. And watch how hard the Bronx will try to get him the ball in this next possession. As Wallace kicks it over to Lind on the far elbow. Riker Lind to Jay Hill. Jay Hill gets a screen from Wallace. Thought about his shot. Bounce pass inside to Kai Barker. No good. And Andrew Hanna goes up for the board. Jackson by 15. Fowler to Hanna. Oh, and there it is. Andrew Hanna with a thousand. And we got it, I think. Into the history books he goes as A.J. Fowler. A.J. Fowler with an easy takeaway and puts it on. 39-20 in. Coach Wasserbaum, surprised, does not try to shut this down. Now he will. But Jackson with a 19-point lead, and here's Andrew Hennis, 1,000th point. I think. Oh, no. no. How can we not have it? Well, it's somewhere. Well, it, the guy it who exists. taught me how to do it is right over there. <laughs> Yeah, we do have it. We'll go back and get the Andrew Hanna with his 1,000th, but more importantly, a 19-point lead for the Bronx with 4.49 to go in the third. And if you were all worried that Evanston would suddenly come out a different team after the half, doesn't look that way. It looks like the Bronx is just finding yet another gear. Jim is aware that Andrew Hanna with a thousand. Everything going Jackson way. Yeah, crowd on their feet. On that far side. Jackson up 19. Brunner, Keelan, Hanna, Borchert, and Fowler starting five for Jackson back on the floor. And for the Red Devils, there's, they got Jordan Mendez out there along with Cook, Wallace, Kai Barker, and Cohen Morrow. So the coach Watts about trying to find any combination that can maybe get some points. Jordan Mendez with a left-hand dribble. Gavin Keelan out on him. Mendez does not like the height disadvantage here, I wouldn't think. And Jordan works it to Kai Barker. Kai kick out to Cohen Morrow. Not usually a threat to shoot, certainly not from 15 feet and beyond. Mendez bumped with a Bronx player, but gets it back. Not much going on. Pesky defense here from the Bronx. Mendez bounce pass looking for a pick and roll, but Clayton Cook never got the message. And now runner with a far side. Borchert corner three, no good. Rebound Keelan. 
Gavin just taller than everybody out there. He just out jumped Cook. Pass inside for Hannah. That's too hot to handle. That had some sauce on it. 4.01 to go in the third. Jackson up 39 20. And the Bronx treating this like a tune up for Green River. As regionals next. Final season, final game of the regular season right now. Down to the last 12 minutes of the season for some of these seniors. Um, this court anyway, Morrow tries to back Borchard up in the lane. Now out to Mendez, Jordan kick out. Wallace long three and he had a hand in his face. Fowler, the shot is short. Rebound Jackson, Seb Brunner, corner. Borchardt drives baseline, puts it up, no good. Wallace got over there to help, but really didn't do much. I think Borchardt just missed that layup. Jordan Mendez puts Keelan in the air, pop shot, too short, no good. Hannah battling for the rebound, gets it, he hits the floor hard. Cohen Morrow picks him up, good sportsmanship there as Coach Elliott tells Seb to wait, wait, wait till everybody gets back into the front court here. Andrew with Cohen Morrow on him. He certainly has the height, but Morrow plays big just because he's so physical. Andrew bumps Morrow right there, and that's the charge. That's a good call. Morrow was set. <laughs> Hannah, his second team first in the third. Inbounds coming here from Kai Barker. He's been very quiet. Just two points for Barker, who averages nearly seven a game. And again, the absence of Luke Robinette still baffling to us. He's a key part of this Red Devil team. Not the guy, but one of the main four anyway. Cohen Morrow, far side to Kai Barker. Drew Barker, rather. Drew kicks it out to Kai. Now to Riker Lynn. Post up 15 footer from the key is no good. And somebody got a hand on that, I think. Yes, yeah, Gavin, Gavin Keelan, and he's been jumpy today. Wow. There's been three times where the defender blew right by him from Gavin jumping. Set runner! Walks right in and puts the layup in. Yeah, this is a Seb Runner legacy game. Last time at home, he's got 17. Almost as much as the entire Red Devil team. <laughs> True. <laughs> Seb makes it 41 20, and he'll go to the line here in a chance to add to it to make it the old fashioned three, and he does. 42 20. Bronx lead it, and yes, somehow my replay has escaped me. Back the Cohen Morrow with his first points of the game lays it up and in for the easy layup. Makes it 42 22, 20 point game. It's Red Devils' first points in a while. Seb Brunner, far side cross court to Borchard. Borchard on Mendez. This should favor Mason, but he throws it right into the arms of Lynn. Lynn, baseball pass ahead to Mendez, to Kai Barker. Now to Cohen Morrow. His shot no good, and the rebound, Hannah. 1.35 to go. Game getting fast paced. Both coaches saying that's all right with us. Let's play it speedy. And a timeout by Coach Elliott. Now he wants to slow it down. We'll take the break on the floor as well with the score. Jackson 42, Evanston 22. You're enjoying Bronx basketball in KZ95, the Jackson Hall Radio Network. Jackson Lumber. The Board Store, Jackson's oldest business and only true lumber yard in town. Jackson Lumber's hardware people are the best in the business, and they do it right the first time. Jackson Lumber works with people who make a living building, so the tools they sell are definitely the best hand tools and power tools available. With names like Vest Tool, Milwaukee, Makita, Skillsaw, Senko, Fine, and DeWalt, Jackson Lumber, the board store at 130 South Grovant. Call 733-6000, 733-6000. This is KZ95 with live coverage of the Jackson Bronx. 
20 point Jackson lead here with 132 to go in the third. You might, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but you might get to the point where you can rest a few guys if that's necessary. You're going to play basketball again on Thursday. Yeah, maybe get some of the other seniors into the game. Yeah. Yes. Get a look at Van Zant and Kana, some of the seniors that were honored here before the game. Senior night in Jackson. Bronx have not lost on this court this season. Borchard up and in. I don't know how Kai Barker did not get a piece of that. Borchard just was in the air for about a month. Yeah, Borchard needed that. I mean, he's kind of on a cold shooting streak out there. Yeah. For Borchard, that's just his fourth point of the game as Morrow dishes out to Jay Hill. He's a triple good. And that was an NBA three. Yes, and it touched the roof of the building before it came down. <laughs> it might have came down with frost. Brunner swings one to Hannah. Hannah working on Clayton Cook. Now to Mason Borcher to Berize. Jackson gets into a weave. And they've seen all man-to-man -man as Keelan knocks down Kai Barker. There's an open look for Hannah. No good. 15-footer won't go. And Andrew can't hit a 15-foot shot from the stripe whether the clock's running or not. Jay Hill pulls up, gives it to Clayton Cook. Down to 30 seconds, Jackson up 19. Inside, Berizé took that away, pass intended for Kai Barker. Jack Berizé grabbed it. Seb Brunner playing for a last shot here in front of the black hole. He's gonna wait, 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 Jay Hill on him. Seb peeking over his shoulder. Now a crossover dribble, can't get loose to Jay Hill though. Look at Jay Hill, steals it away. His shot no good, but Seb Brunner with a retaliation foul there. Seb a little upset. Jackson does never done a good job all season of milk and clock. And I know they were playing for the last shot, I get it. But all season long when Jackson's burning clock, it's a disaster. Yes, because that forces them to move the ball around and then they get a little too comfortable and then force not so good passes. But this time, Jay Hill just went and picked Seb Brunner's pocket. And yeah. Big play for Jay Hill as he's come alive here in the third quarter. Hill hit that triple now with the steal, but he misses the front end. His second is good, and it's 44-26. Last shot for Jackson. Keelan to Seb to Borcher from the baseline, and it will go. So three in the books, and it's Jackson 44, Evanston 26. We'll be right back with the exciting finish after these. Bronx basketball and KC95 on the Jackson Old Radio Network. Great Northern Coffee. Jackson's own coffee roaster has been roasting and blending a wide selection of coffee since 1979. A warm fire, friendly faces, and a cup of great northern coffee. Just a thing to kick off our Bronx and Cowboy teams. Try our Bronx blend, a heavy, rich cup of coffee that will run you over like the Bronx football team. Great northern coffee, available at grocery stores and coffee shops around the state. Also available online at Great Northern Coffee. This is KZ95 with live coverage of the Jackson Bronx. Everything going Jackson's way so far in the final game of the regular season. That happens to have, take place at home where the seniors are feted before game. And they're going to go out on a good note, it looks like. Yes, Jackson, I love how they flipped the script compared to last year. Last year, the third quarter was the worst quarter for the Bronx, and this year they just totally turned that around. And the third quarter today was fantastic showing by the Bronx. Yeah, they really have fixed that. Last year when this team came out of the halftime locker room, they were, it's like, who stole our uniforms? But now they've been much better on the positive note is Fowler fires all the way to Borchard and I can't believe that was the best pass in bounds. Borchard was watched closely by two players, Kai Barker being one of them. They know and he can he dunk and they're, just, they're afraid to let him dunk. Jay, Jay Hill comes out as he's limping pretty badly. He's replaced 
by this guy with the handles now. Drew Barker, Barker to Cohen Morrow, Morrow to Kai Barker, far side Lind, Lind with Keelan on him. And don't think that's not a big reason why Lind's been kind of quiet. That pass inside to Cook, Clayton Cook tries the big down low post move, can't get the shot to go. Morrow with the rebound, another try is Lind. That won't go either. And the rebound taken away, Clayton Cook shot no. But he will draw the foul. Jackson just getting outworked under the basket in that series. Yes, and there's a perfect example of why Evanston does not quit. Time may be against them, and they may be down 18, but they're still not going to. And I love Keelan and Hannah uh, as your rebounding guys, but that was a sequence there that called for Jared Barize to do some rebound. I want to see Barry, Barize and Morrow out there doing that kind of stuff as both shots missed by Clayton Cook, and he's having an uncharacteristically off game. A whistle and a foul coming up on Evanston. It's going to be on Clayton Cook, his second, just the first of the fourth. Seb Brunner with it now for Jackson. We got Owen Kana in the game now. Fowler, Brunner, Kana, Hannah, and Keelan. Fowler was kind of getting trapped there and a timeout by Coach Elliott. Didn't like the way that was going. And yeah, I didn't, I didn't like the let, start to the fourth here has not been good. And Jackson's got to know not to pick up the ball when they're in high pressure situations. And both AJ and Seb picked up the ball while Seb was in the backcourt and just makes it for longer, riskier passes when you pick up the ball. And so Jackson's just got to use the dribble a little bit more and make the clear yeah. possessions. Bronx have done a pretty good job solving the man defense, which has not been their issue. It's the zone that gives them trouble. But Evanston plays a whole different kind of last eight minute defense where they look to trap that all of a sudden the passes that were there earlier aren't there anymore. They can really ratchet up their defense and it looks like they're doing that now. It could be very careful with your passes for sure. Kana will trigger in in front of the black hole here. Jackson up 44-26, 7-16 to go in regulation. Kana nods his head, wants to get this play started. Brunner to Hannah. Hannah's got that 15-footer. If he wants, he'll take it. And he's off the mark, off the glass. Yeah, Hannah, Hannah not very a good shooter at all. I mean, That's he's not a beast shot. in the paint. Yeah. But. It's not his shot at all. And I'm wondering, you know, if Evanson doesn't know that because nobody came out on him. The Red Devils are like, yes, please, Andrew, shoot the 15-footer. Oh, Drew Barker with a drive down the right block. And now a giveaway. Cohen Morrow up and in. And this is Evanston when they're getting hot. you got to call a timeout and slow it because the Red Devils have been doing this all season, playing with a ton of emotion and getting hot out of nowhere. See if Seb Brunner can cool their heels. Here's Keelan back to Brunner. Seb trying to get around Barker, but Drew steps into him. And the foul. And one way to slow the momentum is to stop the clock and go to the line, but we're not there yet. That's just the second foul in Evans, the second from Drew. Mason Borchert. This game's got an eerie feeling of getting away as Seb Brunner launches a long three, well short. Riker Lind with a rebound. It's a 14-point game. Lind gets a screen from Kai Parker. Now to Cohen Morrow. Morrow back to Kai. Kai points for the baseline drive, and that's Lind. Riker Lind back to Parker. His long three is good. Drew Parker. And it's cut now to 11, 44, 33. Keel it as Coach Elliott letting the boys play through it. They're going to feel this and more pressure in Green River. Here's Gavin Keelan. That was a tough shot as out to play him was Kai Barker got a hand in his face. And there's the timeout from Coach Elliott. And oh, the Red Devils like what they see here. Yeah, this game feels like it could just maybe slip away from Jackson. They got to stay in it. They got to keep being intense. 
Let's take a quick break with the timeout on the floor. The score, Jackson 44, Evanston 33. More in a minute on KZ95 and the Jack. Experience Jackson Hole like a local. Recently renovated, the 49er boasts a new lobby, extended continental breakfast, indoor swimming pool, fitness facility, and 12-person outdoor hot tub. Located on Pearl Street, the 49er is just three short blocks from Jackson's greatest bars and restaurants, where you'll find your home away from home. Enjoy your time in Jackson as part of the town square ends, and stay at the 49er Inn and Suites. Here's your voice of the Jackson Bronx, Jake Nichols on KZ95. That well, wasn't long ago after three we were talking about the, the chance for Coach Elliott to maybe work some other players into the game. And now, hold on, Evanston not going quietly. And part of their big run is because of Drew Barker. He's been fantastic getting into the lane, getting to the basket, and getting those layups. Jackson ball, Borchard hands off to Gavin Keelan, out to Owen Kana. As Coach Elliott looking for a spark here as Kana out. Borchert got his shirt pulled by Kai Barker and missed the shot. And Mason just not there so far in this game. And here's Riker Lind. He drives the right block up and in. Riker Lind with a big move and cuts it to single digits now. Jackson up nine, Kana to Keelan. Baseline, Borchard, his shot. Good, and Mason Borchard needed that. Good play by Borchard, could just snap the run from Evanston. Big time for it, for himself and the team. Riker Lynn gets it out to Cook tomorrow. Back to Drew Barker. Drew pulls back behind the arc. Now bounce pass inside. Kari Barker, shot's good. And right over the top of Mason Borchardt, and suddenly Evanston's making everything that they couldn't make before. Owen Kana works it to Borchardt. Cross court to Keelan. AJ Fowler gives it right back to Keelan. Gavin, top of the key for Kana. AJ Fowler inside to Hannah. His shot no good. Rebound, that's not gonna go either. And the rebound, Cohen Morrow, 4-10 to go. Jackson up by nine. A tenuous nine at that as Clayton Cook with it. Over to Cohen Morrow on that far elbow. Bounce pass inside, Kai Barker. His shot no good, good defense there. Barker got bumped, no call. Hannah spins away from Cook and gives it to Gavin Keelan. Keelan working on Lind. Gavin hands off to Owen Kana. The sneaky Drew Barker on him. Watch his hands. Kana triggers it to Keelan. Back to Borchardt. To A.J. Fowler. Cross court. Keelan was not ready for that pass. But did track it down. Gavin Keelan trying to get away from Lind as this Evanston Red Devil defense has ramped up. Hannah to an open A.J. One touch pass to Borchardt in the lane. His shot no good. Gets his own rebound and oh. Cohen Morrow gets a hand on it. And Morrow was going to take that all the way. Cohen just was not going to get Borchardt the freebie. And it's amazing how Mason was able to get that rebound. Just this incredibly long arms. Wanted yeah, I mean, the ball more. Yeah, that's why, he's, that's why he does all the tip-offs. Yeah, he can really get in the air. And it didn't look like he was off the ground too much either. It was just, he's tall. Borchardt has got the first. A lead back to 10, 47-37. For Borchardt, that's his seventh on the afternoon. And Seb leads all, Bronx scores with 18, Hannah with 12. And 1,001 points in his career. The second from Borchardt, good, and Mason. Not having a Mason kind of game, but he's getting important points here for the Bronx when they need him. Seb almost got a steal off of Drew Barker. But Drew recollects now to Clayton Cook. Cook hands to Jordan Mendez. Seb Brunner following him. Now it's Barker in the lane. His shot no good. And Hannah with a rebound. Good defense there by the Bronx. They are not going to let Drew Barker hurt them any more than he already has. 
Eight points for Parker. Seven what a what a euro step by Seb, just showing off his elite handles. 50 to 37. Brunner's got 20 now to lead all scores. Bounce pass inside. It's Cohen Morrow, and he got away from Jack Paris. A good slippery move there. Yeah, I mean, if you're Jackson right now, I think you, you slow the pace, you know, kind of try and salt away the clock. Because, I mean, Drew Barker just led the charge, tr like activating Edison back in the game. <laughs> got a replay of the commercial. I've gone from bad to worse. A timeout on the floor. We'll stay here. And, yeah. I... <laughs> That's enough on all. Everyone's fired now. Liam. Mac, Kimmy, your, your you're computer, all fired. Your computer's fired. Oh computer's fired. I'm going to chuck that right down on the court. Uh, they can pick up the pieces. Jackson up now 50-39. And Evan Stinway, you're just waiting all game long for the Red Devils to for their pushback because there's no way they were going to go as quiet as they were going. And maybe that's the last of it. Looks like Jackson has weathered it. It's interesting how Evanston has gone to the same spot, that right side, that right hand layup within three feet of the hoop. And they did this back in Evanston earlier in the season, and now they're going back to it, and it's been working for the Red Devils. Yeah. I mean, against other teams, Jackson has really bullied that. They really have just not let yeah. that happen because you got Andrew Hannah will come in and block it. Gavin Keelan will just appear out of nowhere and send yep. that to the bleachers. Yeah, you would not think if your coach Watts about that, that's the plan. You wouldn't think, you know, I'm not drawing that up anyway. On the whiteboard, it shouldn't be the plan, but Evanston has been looking all game for anything that'll work for points, and maybe they found a little something. Jackson is going with a full five guys at the starting starters blocks. Can't tell who's doing what, and I don't know if it confused Evanston too much. There's Jack Berizay with it now. Hannah has it. Back to Jack Berizay. Hands off to Keelan. Keelan to Brunner, and that's through his hands. That's over and back. Seb took his hands off that, or took his eye off the pass for a second. And an unforced error goes the Red Devils the basketball. Still time here, 2-13. Evanson trying to chew into an 11 point lead. Jordan Mendez working on Brunner. Hands off to Wallace. Braden Wallace, who started the game in place of Luke Robinets, looked pretty good. Mendez with it now. Gets away from Brunner. That drive on their right block. There it is again, Mac. They do like that right block drive. Yeah, I think they should just put Gavin down there and just have Gavin, like, stand there. Yeah, it's another turnover. Morrow feeds Barker up ahead. Cohen Morrow's shot no good. Hannah with the board. Boy, Jackson in danger of kind of imploding here as Morrow chasing down another turnover. Here comes Clayton Cook. Zero step. Good. Clayton Cook cuts it to seven. 50-43 with a minute 17 to go. Gavin Keelan lost the handle, but it goes right to Borchert. Keelan back out top to Brunner. Jackson not in a hurry to try a shot here as they have a seven-point lead. They're under no pressure to do anything offensively. Hannah kick out to Keelan. And there's the foul we knew was coming. Jordan Mendez bear hugs Gavin Keelan. Yeah, you gotta you gotta be careful who you're letting getting fouled here. You don't really want Andrew to go to the line. You don't want the ball to hand his hands too long. Meanwhile, Evanston's got to commit one more foul to get to where they want to be in the bonus. Jackson's also got to do a job of not getting themselves speed up because when they get sped up, their passes become a lot more sloppier. Keelan holding it, dares somebody to come out and make the contact. Now Brunner on Lind. Seb, and where is the foul? I thought we would see it right away, but we're not. Seb to AJ, he gets bumped hard by Cook, and the Red Devils have identified the guy they want to go to the line. Although, yeah, we're still not there. Sorry, now we will. Clayton Cook commits the hurt, and that's three on him. I know, yeah, we are at the line, I thought so. AJ Fowler will do the duty. 
Fowler has not been the line much this year, if at all, he gets that. 51-43, and yeah. Yeah, all these shots big now. Evanston took a while to really pick somebody to foul, but I mean, like, yeah. I think they were hoping that it was going to Andrew. He took a long time. Fowler makes them both. Those are big. 52-43, nine-point lead again. Jackson backs it back into their defense. Oh, smart play. Trying to save clock, and here's Drew Barker now with Borchard on him. Drew pulls up a 16-foot shot. No good. Seb Brunner with a rebound. Seb waiting for contact, finally gets it. And he'll go to the stripe. Seb Brunner missed a big, big free throw in Green River that could have tied that game, and I know that's probably still in his brain. And he wants these. 37 seconds, Jackson up by a fairly comfortable nine-point margin. Could be 10 here if Seb can convert, and he does. 10-point lead. And we get our look at Van Zanten and Kana for the Jackson Bronx. Everybody trying to make sure in the backcourt who's got who as Seb converts both. Uh, that's going to come close to salting this away. Timeout for Coach Matt Elliott. And with the timeout on the floor, we'll stay here. A little bit of a scary moment. Tell the truth. Were you guys worried a little bit? A little yeah. bit? Because yeah. in the past, it kind of when they sped up and yeah. got sped up, it reminded me of deja vu of Teton when I was a junior. <laughs> And we led the whole, Jackson Bronx led the, almost the entire game, and then Teton went on a gigantic run at the fourth quarter, and then Teton won the game. That was not a good memory, and it just got a little bit of flashbacks. And so, but with this Jackson Bronx team, they've been doing a great job despite other teams' opponents getting a little bit of a run. Jackson's been able to hold off on it, especially this year showing a lot more resiliency, resolve, any other R word you want to think of, but Coach Elliott has noticed it out of this team. Evanston with the ball now, it's Mendez to Barker. Drew is good for the triple. To make it 54-46, just to see if I got a replay on that, no. Evan still with a short timeout. We'll stay here. 28-9 to go. Drew's come to play. Barker, the senior, averaging four and a half a game, and he's better than that today with 11 to lead all Red Devil scorers. Meanwhile, the usual suspects, Cook, Lind, have been pretty quiet. Yeah, I mean, Drew Barker definitely just not giving up so far. Always trying to stay in it. I mean... If I'm playing, I, I probably would have thought it was out of reach when it was like 20, top yeah. of the fourth. Yeah. And yeah, now it's only just a four possession game or three possession game if Evanston starts shooting threes like they just did right there. And it's been the Bronx MO to let their defense choke you out and really not go for a shot. It's not Jackson's best look offensively, killing time, but I can't imagine they'll be in a hurry to fire a shot here. It's more about who do you want to take free throws. That's why Hannah is inbounds here, because he's the last guy you want to get hacked. Bounce pass into Kana. He's double teamed. They're trying to just play defense without. There is finally the arm. As Kana's like, come on, what do I got to do? Meanwhile, Cohen Morrill coming up limping on that left ankle. That's a concerning. But wait a minute, why are we not shooting free throws here? As as it was, they called it a jump ball, not a, wow. not a region. Oh boy, that was an arm. Lind had an arm around Kana. Okay. Oh. Riker Lind will inbounds here. Gets it to Ballers, who shots off the front. Long three there is no good. and. 
That would have made the game really, really interesting if that would have gone in and made it a five-point game. All right, big yeah. apologies to Luke Robinette. I just heard Elon over there on the homer side of things call Wallace Robinette. So they might have different uniforms for home and away. Well, someone left their jersey at home. Yeah, Somebody forgot to take it this morning. That has not been Wallace all night. That's been Luke Robinette. So meanwhile, Hannah. Converts the front end and makes it 55-46. And his second is good as well. Andrew Hanna doing it all this afternoon. So that is Luke Grumman. That makes sense. Here's Mendez with it. Back to Drew Barker. Drew inside a cook. Kicks it right back out to Mendez. Three is short. And Andrew Hanna with the rebound. This will do it. And the Jackson. And Jackson secures the second seed. Yes, they do. And this will be the third straight year in a row that Jackson has won on senior day when they won back in 22 against Evanston. A very similar score. It might be the exact same score. I think it was 56 to 46. Wow. And then last year was a 49-29 win over Green River. Remember that one well. Fairbairn, how many things are in your brain that just stay yeah. there like that? Well, I could never forget my <laughs> own senior night or senior okay, day. Okay, yeah, of course, of course. But yeah, it's always a fun, festive atmosphere in Jackson. Yeah, third year in a row. Jackson takes care of business, survives a little bit of a scare to get the 10 point win. 56 46, as Liam McPeak pointed out. Uh, that's, that's big in seeding, so they'll head to regionals as the number two seed. Meanwhile, Cohen Morrow going off and well, that is not good to see him limping so badly on that ankle. Uh, but Jackson does three things. They obviously vault to the number two seed. That's huge. They hold home court here and stay unbeaten here at home. Hey, turn around for the cameras, Andrew. <laughs> Andrew Show the cameras. <laughs> yeah. I bet you it says undefeated at home. How much you want to bet? No. <laughs> Think so? Andrew Hanna will keep the game ball, it looks like. It's going to be a 1,000 point. And maybe undefeated at home. <laughs> yeah, Hanna gets a 1,000 career points. Jackson stays unbeaten at home, and they jump to the second seed of regional. So Best possible outcome. They do a lot of good things here. It is the 1,000 point club is wow. what the sign says. All right, we're going to do a quick MVP of the game for the Red Guys. What do you got? You mean Drew Barker, unrelenting, stayed in it the whole game. Yeah. Yes, I'm also going to say Drew Barker. Loved playing against him. He was He's a fierce competitor. Plays so hard. He could really make you pay from anywhere. He could shoot the ball. He could take it to the rim. And he was doing all of that today and really made Jackson pay. And yeah. Almost scared the Bronx a little bit as he was a big catalyst for that big run that Evanston made in, this, in the fourth quarter. Barker had 11 to pace all Devils. Uh, eight out of Clayton Cook. That's a little bit off his normal 10. I'm going to go Luke Robinette just because I was calling him the wrong name all afternoon. <laughs> he had seven and he's usually good for five. For the hometown team, who's your favorite guy? It's got to be a senior. We'll start with that. But who? Yeah, I'm going to go with Andrew Hanna. I mean, breaking a thousand career points, that's like at least three zeros. Okay. I like it. Yes. Andrew really got the job done in that third quarter. That's where most of his points came from. And that's what got Jackson such a big lead in the first place. But I got to go with Seb Brunner. Just the maturity of his game is so much improved compared to when he was a freshman four years ago. And Seb really took his shot selection was one of the best shot selection games I've ever seen from Seb as he took the right shots and they were just falling and everything was going right for him. I agree. I can go 50-50 on Hannah Brunner and I'll go Seb only because he, he did everything Hannah did. Hannah did everything he did. But Seb had that one extra thing and that's he played within himself and it's been the one last piece to his all-around game that has not clicked yet, I don't think. And maybe it did today. He didn't try to take over a game. He took the game as it came and he did everything. He just did everything right. I'll go with Seb Runner as well. Final here and it's a good one. Jackson 56, Evanston 46. And we'll see you next when we go to Green River for regionals. We'll have all that action for you. Uh, 
it remains to be seen whether it'll be on our YouTube channel or whether it'll be SVI, but you'll be able to find it if you're at all savvy. If you're not, find somebody who's under 18 years old and have them point you to the right direction because we'll have all these games live streamed regionals coming up somewhere. For on behalf of Liam McPeak, Beck Fairbairn, Kimmy K, I'm Jake Nichols for Jackson Old Radio wishing you and yours a good Saturday afternoon. See you next week as we get into postseason.